All right. Welcome back. Our second edition of our Surf and Suds at Home Fest on this Father's Day weekend. And I'm so excited to be hanging out with you guys once again. Uh, we have, I'm Andres Nuno uh, from Fuego Events and Surf and Suds Beer Festival. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm excited to be hanging out with you guys. Uh, this event is Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed some great craft beer with your kids. Uh, because that's how I want to spend my Father's Day weekend. Uh, this time, we have 14 independently owned craft breweries, um, and we're teaming up with the Central Coast Craft Beer Festival and our friends, the Central Coast, uh, Central Coast Brewers Guild. Uh, so each one of these breweries are members of the Central Coast Brewers Guild. Uh, we're going to be visiting four counties. So I'm super excited about the lineup. It is straight fire. So I couldn't be more excited. All right, so our, uh, our home fest are brought to you by Go Galita. Galita is packed full of adventure, wide open beaches, and hidden gems. It's a great spot for you to enjoy with friends and family. So thank you to Go Galita for helping us make this event happen. We're so excited. This event also couldn't be made possible without our sponsors. So we want to thank them all as well. We have Booze League, our title sponsor, City of Atascadero, Coastal Dispensary, Happy Place Craft Beer, Drink Tanks, Guido App, Vote Beer Fest, Acorn Bar, Out West Digital, and the Santa Barbara Independent. It's also brought to you by Infuego Events. We'll be taking you through 14 beers from four counties, Monterey, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and finally ending in Ventura. I'm really excited about this lineup and the beers that are including a variety of boxes. A lot of these beers, uh, are not available uh, all the time, so you guys are lucky to grab those. Make sure you guys tag us in all your photos. It's at Surf Beer Fest. We'll try, uh, while trying each one of these beers. Wanna see how you guys are enjoying these amazing craft beers in your homes, so take photos, tag us, hashtag Surf and Suds. We are working this time with Vote Beer Fest. So go to votebeerfest.com, so you can, you can enter uh, what you like about each one of these beers, and uh, also get a chance to win a pair of VIP tickets to our Carpinteria Surf and Suds event on Saturday, August 15th. We are officially live and direct from the Winston Blue Studio in Ojai, California. So let's get things going. All right. So first off, I wanna say uh, thank you uh, to Go Galita Booze League. We're gonna start, so get your first beer ready. We're gonna start in San Luis Obispo County with the Central Coast Brewing. So go ahead and get that uh, Raspberry Sunrise ready, crack it open. And uh, you should have all got glasses. Some of you got Surf and Suds glasses. Other ones got uh, Central Coast Craft Beer Festival ones. You're going to be pouring about middle of the glass. It's a two-ounce pour. Today I have a, my beer guy who's just going to be handing me beers all day. So beer me, please. There we go. So let's crack this open and uh, pour yourself a little drink. Little taster. So we're starting in San Luis Obispo County. Uh, we're going to go through five beers from five independently owned breweries. Um, and we're going to be starting in San Luis Obispo with Central Coast Brewing. So uh, I chose this beer. I'm a sucker uh, for sours. And so uh, I try to get a lot of people uh, to be excited about it too. So let's crack, this, uh, let's crack this open. It's Imperial Kettle Sour. Let's hear what they have to say now. Hey guys, it's George at Central Coast Spring. Thanks for coming by Six Side Gear to help us celebrate Home Fest 2020. Um, a little bit about CCB, we've been around since 1998. Um, our original location on Monterey Street, and now a couple years ago we opened up the High Gear location. Um, we're really, really happy to have you guys with us today. We're showcasing Raspberry Sunrise, one of my favorite beers, and one that just looks great on film. Hey y'all, this is Skyler at Central Coast Brewing, one of the three brewers here. Thanks for enjoying Raspberry Sunrise with us. What you can expect from this beer is a lot of fresh raspberries along with a little bit of citrus notes to lift up that fresh fruit. Finishes with a creamy-like sorbet flavor and also has just a little bit of tartness to it. 
I would enjoy this beer by the pool, on a hike, for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and even sunset, maybe even sunrise. We make this beer with 50% wheat malt and 50% of our base two row malt. And it's a derivative of the style of German Berliner Weiss, which is a low alcohol German wheat beer. So we've taken that, made it an imperial version, to bump the alcohol up to about 7.5%. Uh, after we have mashed in, we go over to the boil kettle with all of our wort. Once the, all the wort is in the kettle, we pasteurize it at about 180 degrees, cool it back down to 100 degrees, and do a pure pitch of lactobacillus. That'll take the pH of the wort from about 4.5, and then overnight turn it into about 3.5 is what we're looking for. The next day, after it's about three and a half pH, we'll do a small hop addition during a boil, send it into the fermenter, and pitch our house California ale yeast. At about the very end of fermentation, we will add 21 pounds per barrel of raspberry for this beer, which is quite a lot. At the end of fermentation, what we'll go ahead and do is add a little bit of clarifying agent. We'll add a little bit of orange zest to lift out that raspberry, and carbonate the beer a little bit higher than normal to about 2.75 to 2.8 volumes. Uh, and after that, you can see you get this nice, beautiful, clear, refreshing beer. Enjoy. If you guys are looking to pick up some of this beer, you can come into our Six Higuera location. Uh, we're open for a COVID safety, social distant restaurant service here in mid-June. Uh, you can also check out Taco Tuesday at Monterey Street. Another way you can get our beer is statewide distribution through our website. Also check our social media pages for upcoming releases like a Pacific Sunrise. And a version of this beer that has pineapple, mango, orange, and guava. Cheers y'all! All right, well, I hope I uh, got a couple of you guys to try sours that haven't before and uh, were maybe a little afraid to, but uh, one, that's a whole lot of raspberries, and uh, I can see why it's George's uh, favorites. So um, this is super easy to drink. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's fruity, refreshing, so I thought it was a great way to start. Um, you can enjoy it anywhere, anytime, anytime, you know, it doesn't need to be hot, cold, um, so Enjoy that. Um, I cannot wait to try the Pacific Sunrise. That sounds really good. So these guys have two locations uh, in San Luis Obispo, one on Monterey Street and Higuera Street. Uh, they're both open right now, so make sure you guys go check them out. Higuera Street one uh, has a great menu, and they're offering delivery and curbside service at both locations as well. So uh, make sure you go by there. Um, if you want to order a statewide distribution, so that's great. Um, also, uh, thanks, Skyler, for the great explanation of what goes on in the brewing process for the Raspberry Sunrise. So it's centralcoastbrewing.com, centralcoastbrewing.com. You can get some more information about them. Next up, uh, we're gonna go to Silva Brewing. So I'm gonna slide this over. We're gonna kind of latch them on there. So Central Coast, or, uh, sorry, Silva Brewing located in Paso Robles. Bear me por favor. So uh, Silva's in Paso Robles. Uh, we're trying, it's the only half we have today. It's called Gateway to Heaven. And uh, Chuck Silva is going to tell us a little bit about the beer. So go ahead and pour yourselves a taster, a little two-ouncer again. And uh, let's see what he has to say. Hello, welcome to Silva Brewing, COVID-19 curbside pickup. We've been doing curbside pickup for almost three months now, since mid-March. You can order cans online, prowlers, and specialty bottles for curbside pickup. Curbside will continue, although we actually hope to be opening here this Friday. So as long as the county signs off, we'll be opening in a limited capacity. Come on into the brewery and I'll see, show you what we've got going on. Here we have a stack of Gateway to Heffen that we just filled. 
Um, just in time for the Beer Festival, Father's Day weekend, for the Brewers Guild Festival, virtual beer festival. Since we're unable to do that in person, here we've got uh, 13 cases ready to go, heading your way. Uh, nice Bavarian style Hefeweizen called Gateway to Hefe. Here's our two spout filler where we just fill cans. Get ready to happen. Our next up is the uh, last of our Imperial IPA called Yakima Express. And then our single seamer. Since we started canning in the beginning of April, we've run through about 11,000 cans. And not bad considering it's just a two spout filler. So shout out to all of you buying these cans and supporting Silver Brewing. Cheers. Okay, so here we are at uh, Fermenter 2, which is uh, currently our, our finishing tank for this. Um, we're going to take a Zwickle sample right off the tank and show you what that looks like, and then I'll taste it with you. So a Bavarian Hefeweizen has some really particular traits, and some of them are very yeast-driven. What does that mean? Yeast-driven means a lot of the flavor comes directly from the yeast as opposed to hops or any other added ingredient. Alright, got a nice lively beer foam here. I can let a little spill over here because I'm in the brewery and I've got a, a floor drain. Uh, so unfiltered Bavarian wheat beer has uh, some unique banana, ester, and hints of uh, clove spice. And you can expect that from most Bavarian Hefeweizen in different degrees of balance. We have just a little hint of cit um, citrus from a citrusy hop component that is Mandarin and Bavaria. It's still a German hop, but it's a little more uh, it's a modern variety. It's a, a newer release. So it's all about a rich, creamy, dense beer foam with this beer, unfiltered for a softer texture, and uh, just a hint of sweetness perceived from that banana ester. You get good lace on the glass, good indication that not only do you have a clean glass, but you have a high quality beer. At Silver Brewing, my wife and I, MJ, um, we have just a couple of employees, Dylan, who's the videographer today, who's been filling um, cans and seaming cans with me today. And then we have Brian uh, back in the tasting room. It's just the four of us. It's a small brewery. It's a passion project. We have a variety of beer styles uh, offered here. Uh, some traditional, some modern, with a hazy IPA, West Coast IPA, Bavarian Hefeweizen. We actually have Pilsner in the tank, also a German style Pilsner, and um, that'll be our first lager coming out in about two weeks, so look for that in cans as well. Um, affectionately called Crisp Beer. So uh, we do um, the pink stuff, a sparkling rosé beer, we do multiple stouts, including walnut milk stout, imperial stout, Espresso Imperial Stout. We do bourbon barrel aged and rye barrel aged version of that too, called Silva Stout. We have uh, Belgian uh, influenced beers that are yeast driven and hop driven, like Chuckamuck. We have a uh, French Saison that is uh, loaded with ginger, MJ Spicy Ginger. And those are just a few of the varieties of beers that we have at Silva Brewing. Uh, Rhinestone Red, Paso Pale. Nice, regular, everyday drinkers, uh, first gold colch, um, and, and many more actually. So come on out to the tasting room when you feel comfortable to come out in public. Um, we'll be safe wearing our masks and gloves and serving you. Um, please call ahead and see if we have an open table. Um, that'll help while we're still in this uh, very limited uh, capacity situation. But. Um, if you're just up for curbside, you can go online to silverbrewing.com, click on the pop-up link, it will 
will take you to our square store, and then you can support us um, through your uh, beer tasting, beer drinking experiences by buying our four pack cans, our crowlers to go, which are uh, all currently $10 only, and then uh, our specialty bottles too, which actually have some discounted pricing during this COVID-19 shutdown period. So curbside stays alive, and, um, and then hopefully we'll be opening on Friday. Um, so why the diversity of beer styles when some aren't as popular as others, like Belgian Triple might not be as popular as Hazy IPA? And it's simple for me. I do it for the love of beer. And we put that on our wall, and we put that on our logo. And uh, anyway, cheers to all you dads out there, Father's Day weekend, and everybody else that's participating in the uh, Central Coast Brewers Guild Virtual um, Beer Festival. Cheers for the love of beer. All right, well, thank you, Chuck. That was, uh, you know, that's a, that's a well done F. Um, it's not a style that I've uh, always gone out to search or uh, try. So I'm really glad that, uh, that we were able to get this from Chuck. Uh, they literally just started canning. So this is, we're really extremely lucky to, uh, to get this inside those variety packs. Um, for those of you guys who know craft beer, uh, I'm sure you recognize the name Chuck Silva. Chuck Silva for uh, 10 years was a brewmaster at Green Flash. Uh, kind of took them to national prominence and uh, was, is, is one of the top brewers in the state. And uh, now he's there in Paso Robles. Uh, he's racked up, racked up a ton of national awards uh, while brewing there, and now we're lucky enough. Uh, he's just up the coast from where I live uh, there in Paso Robles with his own independently owned brewery. Um, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, having Chuck involved in this is, to me, a 25. So thank you, Chuck. Um, these guys are offering curbside delivery every day. Um, visit them on their website. It's silvabrewing.com. Follow them on, on uh, their social media, too. Um, Chuck's always putting up videos to do a great job of that. And uh, if you get a chance to go through uh, Paso Robles, please uh, make sure you stop by there. Uh, so that's silvabrewing.com. Uh, so we're going to move on to uh, our third beer in just a second, uh, which is going to be, if you want to get ready, liquid gravity. Um, but we want to uh, thank the city of Atascadero uh, for being our sponsor for San Luis Obispo County. Um, they've been great partners with us for uh, our Central Coast Craft Beer Festival uh, that we uh, manage for the Central Coast Brewers Guild. Um, it's going to be on Saturday, October 24th. Um, over 60 independently owned craft breweries will be there. There's also cider, there's wineries, uh, and kombucha on site. Um, I love Atascadero. Uh, been there a few times, and uh, it's an open container law or an open container city, so. That's pretty dang awesome. They also have some great breweries. Um, so uh, we're going to show you a quick little slide of uh, places you can stay during our event. So uh, we do have some partner hotels for the Central Coast Craft Beer Festival. Um, one of them, uh, so make sure you stay for the weekend. Uh, the Holiday Inn Express is our presenting sponsor. Uh, they have some great rooms and VIP packages. Um, we also have uh, the Spring Hill Suites, who's uh, another great sponsor. Uh, those guys are our wristband sponsor. So if you look down at your wristband sponsor, our the wristband logo, you'll see their logo on there. Uh, those guys have some great room rates. Uh, they got a pool, and of course they got a great uh, craft beer bar. Check out centralcoastcraftbeerfest.com to see our hotel partner packages. Um, and as soon as this is over, I'm going to have Tony Guild come over. Uh, and it's so I'm going to move my seat over so Tony can come hang out with me. Uh, Tony Grimes is the uh, president of the Central Coast Brewers Guild and has also been with Figaro Mountain Brewing Company for a number of years. So Tony, come sit next to me, social distancing, of course. Uh, so Tony, um, you know, Tony's, uh, like I said, the president of the Central Coast Brewers Guild. So what, what exactly, well, first, uh, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Yep. Uh, what is the Central Coast Brewers Guild? Well, it's uh, a consortium. Uh, we represent 50 plus uh, brewery members along the Central Coast of California. And really it's just 
you know, trying to bring everybody together, uh, communicate as a community, uh, as breweries. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's obviously help needed along the way with a lot of breweries. So <laughs> we're able to talk to one another and uh, share ideas, thoughts, struggles, yeah. challenges, but also wins, you know, things that are working. Oh, that's cool. Um, right. But really, it, it's about the consumer awareness and trying to make sure the the customers, the guests, uh, know about all the craft brewing opportunities in the Central Coast. And they're all they're all independently owned, correct? So, like, what exactly yeah. does independently owned mean in the craft beer world? Yeah, I mean, obviously, not big brewery, big production, uh, uh, you know, conglomerate companies. Uh, these are small mom and pop, brick and mortar craft brewing companies. Um, it's really founded on you know the love, the passion for craft beer. So, yeah. you know, it is. It takes a lot of work to get these breweries up and running. And uh, it's nice to have a community and it's nice to have a guild to yeah. be a part of that, uh, to kind of be a sounding board to help people out. So it's kind of like, like, like what we just saw with Chuck, where he yeah. came from like a much bigger brewery and it comes starts his own thing. It's literally just Chuck and his wife yeah. running that, the show there. Yeah, I mean, you know, and he, he knows what he's doing, obviously. Yeah. Chuck's the man. <laughs> he does uh, know what he's doing. Beer, but you still run into issues along the way or need help or you know you, you want that sense of community so it's kind of what we're all about is just providing that that conduit for people yeah and so how many uh how many around about how many members you guys have 50 plus yeah uh, yeah i mean it's fluctuated but uh you know at this point in time with the whole epidemic thing I yeah think we're considering everybody on the central coast a member you know yeah. we're, we're kind of waived all of our fees and we're just trying to connect people together at this point uh so we represent everybody on the central coast yeah and it's yeah, Monterey to Ventura yeah. County. That's a, a long lot, stretch. A lot of breweries. Sweet, man. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for uh, being behind the camera, and thank you for coming around and, and saying hi. And thank you. Yeah, you're doing yeah. great work. I uh, love the support that you've given us over the years, and uh, yeah. hopefully we'll continue to just keep it keep going. Anytime, anything we can do to help, that's for sure. Cool. So, uh, you know what we should do is we got that video from uh, Monica at Liquid Gravity, uh, right? Yeah, I can so, throw that on. Yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So, Hey, so thank you to Tony. Tony will be back. We're going to be calling some vent some people in a while. So Vendi Tony will be back. Um, so yeah, we, we did get a, a cool video um, that kind of talks about what Tony just did, um, what the Central Coast Brewers Guild means to the breweries themselves. So we're going to show you a video of uh, Monica Dugan, who's from Liquid Gravity Brewing Company, tell us a little bit more about what it means to her. everyone i hope you're enjoying the surf and says virtual beer festival my name is monica and i wanted to chat with you really briefly about the central coast brewers guild you might recognize us from our annual beer festival in Tascadero, but we are so much more than just that festival uh the guild is made up of over 50 breweries here on the central coast from ventura all the way to monterey county having a network of breweries like this to work together definitely makes life a little easier on the rare occasion that there's something that I don't know, I can reach out to one of my guild mates and they can help me with some answers. If I run out of crawlers, they run out of crawlers. We can work together, really make the Central Coast beer community a thing. Um, what it means for you guys is we can be a great resource for you to get information about your favorite breweries and some breweries you might not know yet. We have a really great website. I highly recommend you checking out. We have an interactive beer trail that shows all the breweries here on the Central Coast, lists their business hours, website, all that fun stuff that you need to know. We also have a page dedicated to coronavirus because that's a thing. So you can know who's doing to go, who's doing delivery, and what current business hours are like. The other really awesome thing is there's a calendar of events and when the day comes that I can have you back at my brewery, drinking a beer, enjoying some live music, you can find it there on our website too. Definitely check it out. Um, maybe use that to find a brewery you aren't so familiar with. Maybe one in San Luis Obispo. Maybe one that opened this year. Liquid Gravity. Maybe. I don't know. I'm a little biased. Anyway, Central Coast Brewers Guild. Check it out. Visit our website, centralcoastbrewersguild.com. Enjoy the rest of the festival, guys. Have a great time. All right. Well, thank you, Monica. That was awesome. So uh, speaking of Monica, we're going to actually head into Liquid Gravity. 
So beer me, por favor. Uh, so we're going to be cracking open the lager. It's our first lager that we've had today. So go ahead and pour yourself a drink. Um, check out this. Uh, you can see right here we have all the brewery logos. Uh, you can get an idea of how many breweries truly are part of the Central Coast Brewers. That's a, that's a whole lot of them. So um, like I said, we just met Monica uh, from Liquid Gravity. So we're actually, now that we have this beer popped and, and poured, um, we're going to head over to Brendan uh, Go, who's the owner and head brewer there, and see what he has to say about his beer. Hi, everybody. I am Brendan Goff. I am the owner and head brewer here at Liquid Gravity. Um, we have a pretty cool beer for you today. It is a German style lager, uh, pretty traditional. Um, Munich Helles is, is the official style. Um, we'll get into the beer in just a minute. I'll give you a brief little background kind of on who I am and, and where I came from and, and you know where this what, what our brewery is about. Um, so I've been in the industry for about 10 years. Um, I was most recently the head brewer over at Central Coast Brewing and I brewed up at Firestone Walker um, before that. Um, and so you know, this, this project, the Liquid Gravity, is, is really, you know, my passion project. This is where you know, I was able to take, you know, the experience that I've gained through working in this industry for a long time and, and to come and kind of put my own stamp on it and to build my own brand and to do, you know, do, do the beers that I wanted the way I wanted and to kind of have fun doing it. So um, I'm excited to be able to share these with you and kind of be able to introduce uh, myself and our brand uh, to you all um, and so I thank you for joining joining in on such a cool event and uh, I want to say thank you to you know everybody that helped put this on it's uh, you know in the times that we're living in right now to be able to get together even virtually is is still still important you know so uh, I want to dive into the beer a little bit with you and so I am going to uh, enjoy one here as well So one of the things you'll notice about our beers is that you know I really try to make um, a point to, to get to get really good head retention, and a lot of you may be looking at that thinking like, oh, that's too much foam. Um, for me, on these German style beers, that that nice moussey foam on top of the beer is such a big part of the experience. Um, you almost want to kind of you know have to fight through that foam a little bit to get to the beer. It'll leave you, you know, remember the old milk mustache? Well, this this will leave you a, a beer mustache. And so this lager, you know, we carb it, we carbonate it up a little higher than maybe you would see a lot of other people who um, are brewing similar beers. Uh, but a lot of it, again, to me, is just that, that moosey head and that really effervescent Carbonation is such a such an important part of um, of the experience, especially with these lager beers. And so, I like to actually pour it, let that foam collapse and settle down a little bit. And as it settles, it'll actually become more dense. And so, as you get that denser foam, it'll get even moosier and even thicker on there. And so, we'll just kind of pour it and let it settle, and pour it and let it settle. Um, you'll hear the term slow pour um, as a, kind of a trendy way of pouring, pouring German style beers. Um, it's starting to catch on in the U.S. a little bit, uh, but it really does stack that foam on there and condense in it and you end up with a much, uh, much more dense head on the beer. And it's just kind of a beautiful thing to see too. I mean, it'll start billowing out of the, billowing out of the top of the glass like that. Um, you know, I, I, I love that look, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, but, you know, the effervescence from that carbonation is just, you know, I mean, you can see it. It's active. It's lively. So, we'll get the rest of that thing poured in there. So, I always like to try to send these beers out if you ever come to the, you know, to the brewery. Um, I do occasionally pour beer. Uh, for you know trying to help out and uh, I like to send beers out to the tables like you know when they have that big rocky head on them um, so 
don't be uh, you know don't be alarmed when you pour it if you if you get more head than you're used to. Um, we carbonate this German style beer higher than you typically would find most beers in a can, and so that is sort of the first part of the experience here. All right, we're ready. So tasting notes on this one. Um, again, it's a very traditional German style German style lager. And uh, so we're using all continental uh, Pilsner malt. That's Pilsner malt that's been grown in Germany. It's, it's hops that have been grown in Germany. And um, it's, it's yeast from a famous German brewery as well. Um, so the yeast that we're using actually comes from the Augustiner Brewery. Um, it's one of my favorites. It helps keep things really nice and tight and crisp and has that signature little touch of sulfur um, on the fermentation. Um, it's just very, very classic and traditional uh, German style beer. And so when I get into the aroma on this thing, I get, I get a little bit of uh, kind of like a graham cracker um, kind of aroma and that Pilsner malt is, is what's going to contribute that. And so it's this Pilsner malt is very, very lightly kilned. And so you get that kind of crackery, a um, little bit of that graham cracker, um, you know, it almost hints at sweetness in the aroma. Um, a sweetness is isn't really an aroma. It's obviously uh, you know more on the on the palate, but it but it alludes to you know some some. It reminds you of things that are a little sweet, and so and this beer definitely leans a little more towards the malty and sweet side, um, where something like a pilsner is going to be more on the dry, more on the bitter side. Um, this beer really is you know is it's that perfect balance. It's got just enough bitterness. A little sweetness to, to, to kind of balance out that bitterness um, and just a really really drinkable crushable uh, German style lager so we'll get into the get into the first sip here so again you'll find I think uh, I think you'll find the same characteristics on the palate that you that you smell you know, you have that that little that little graham cracker type sweetness, and that's backed up with a little bit of a floral, um, you know, a floral character. Um, but but really, this beer is is sort of a showcase of that German Pilsner malt, and so it's it's you know it's very it's very simple. You know, we have a a quote on here that life can be beautiful in its simplicity, and that this this German style beer is is no different. You know, it's not trying to be too much. Um, it, it really is, you know, as a brewer, we go through our whole day thinking, talking, living beer. And it's, and it's great. You know, some of the really complex styles, the big stouts, you know, the heavily hopped IPAs, all that, all that stuff is wonderful. It's, it's one of the things we love about it, um, the, about beer. But it's also nice to just kind of have something that you don't have to think about as well. And to me, that's why, you know, on, on a lot of our, on a lot of our cans, we'll, we'll take the opportunity on the back to, to let you know, you know, about that beer, whether it's the flavor profile we're going to or going for, or some sort of history on, on either that style or just some way to communicate, you know, to people who will be buying the beer, uh, what it is. And, um, we kind of bucked that, uh, that, tradition on this can, you know, where, where that space, we would usually write that, you know, we decided just to, just to let you know that it's a lager. And so, you know, this truly is that beer that is, is wonderfully balanced. It's, it's, it, it has nuance and finesse, but it's not overly complicated. And so it's something that you can kind of just crack and drink while you're barbecuing. Um, something that you can mix in in between your hazy IPAs and your pastry stouts and, and everything else or whatever you're drinking. It's a good kind of beer in the middle that can help cut some of that stuff. And so I'm going to have a, another sip here with you. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I do want to take a minute just to kind of talk about some of the other stuff we do and the other beers that we brew. Um, we grab a couple cans.
So just to kind of give you an idea, some of the other stuff that, that we do around here. Um, obviously, we, we, you know, we're, we do love our hops and we do love our IPAs. It's, it's a big part of, of, I think, what we are kind of becoming known for. Um, Liquid Gravity IPA is our, is our kind of signature IPA. Um, big, heavily hopped with uh, Centennial and Mosaic. Uh, really beautiful balanced beer that is it's it's hop forward but it still it still remains balanced and very drinkable the bitterness isn't over the top um, it is kind of a modern interpretation of that West Coast IPA style it's got a little lower bitterness than maybe you traditionally would have found five or ten years ago um, and it's you know big big kind of new school hop presence uh, with, the, with the mosaic um, and this one is kind of our, you know, our signature beer. Um, Hop Trippin, we obviously also uh, are doing a fair amount of hazy IPAs. Excuse me. So these two are, are both examples of ones that we brewed in the past. Uh, this is Hop Trippin, which is our current hazy double IPA. And we've got this one. Uh, you should be able to find this one kind of out and about. Um, uh, the other beer here on the list is our Atomic Guava. And that one is a kettle sour that we brew uh, with just loads of guava and citrus zest in it. Really bright, fresh, effervescent. Um, but uh, all, all of these beers, I think, are a pretty good representation of kind of what our brewery does and is about. You know, we go everywhere from clean, classic, German-style beers, you know, into, into kettle sours and West Coast IPAs and... Obviously, the big, hazy, juicy IPAs are, are really, really big right now. And so I think, I think if I had to kind of sum up uh, what we're about and, and what I think we do well, this is kind of the, you know, the, the showcase of it. So uh, we hope you enjoy the, the, the lager that you guys are, are, are able to taste on the, the virtual fest here. And then, you know, we'd like to see you come in to the tasting room. And if you see me, go ahead and grab me and say hi, and I'll have a beer with you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Brandon. You know, Brandon sure knows how to make a beer. In 2018, it was voted uh, the Brewer of the Year at the California Mid-State Fair by his peers, and that's a, that's a huge honor for him. Uh, they just started Liquid Gravity last year, and it's quickly becoming, uh, or quickly going to become a staple on the Central Coast. Uh, Tony and I, uh, kind of have a goal to visit every brewery in the guild, and this is one of the breweries we haven't gone to. So next time I'm up there, I'm going to definitely uh, stop by. So uh, make sure you check them out, liquidgravitybrewing.com, and uh, follow them on social media as well. Next up, all right, you guys ready for another one? So I'm going to ask for a beer. We're going to go with Humdinger Brewing. So I'm going to place this over here with our sick collection. Beer me. Gracias. Uh, probably the coolest name on here. Ch it's called Ships Ahoy Crispy Boy. So this is another new brewery along the Central Coast. So I'm trying to get you guys uh, beers that are fresh, new, and uh, breweries that just started just in case you haven't tried them yet. So this is, uh, again, Ships Ahoy Crispy Boy from Humdinger and Arroyo Grande. I love this video. I know you will too. Let's get to it. I'm Justin, and my name is Lee, from a brand new brewery. It's called Humdinger, it's N-A-G. We're just a couple home brewers who had to see what it feels like when you follow a dream. Got an awesome kitchen with delicious food, and I believe it or not, the beer is good too. We love everything to do with beer. We're gonna take this business to a new frontier. Our goal is to have a place for community 
to enjoy a beer like a unity. Patrons love us for our food and drink. Put that beer in front of you. Yo, what do you think? Ships ahoy, quips of joy. Yeah. Delivering cans like a paper boy. Uh -huh. We equip your lips till you're re-employed. Always keeping your crispy boy. Bohemian yeast, a kiss of hot. Fresh as hell, like when the beat drops. Yeah. Say goodbye to sobriety no. when this can's out in front of me. Cause I go crazy for this shit. It's so crispy and legit. Pours liquid gold cold in my glass. Say it's whack and I'll kick your ass. Loose lips sing ships, your lips sip this. A pilsner that fills your lips with bliss. Clean and crisp, malt not miss. Backbone for the bitterness. Beer, beer, down, down your throat. throat. Gonna pound it, not to gloat. Three, two, one, flip on go. Flip on go. In your grill. Suck it down. Get your fill. Got a cracker jack man chilling on the boat. Little fella will get my vote for the best beer ever to hit my glass. Hand me something else and I'll say hard pass. Pills, chills, skills, and thrills. No spills, low fills, or treadmill. Hanging loose, getting fat. Tell me, homeboy, where you at? Yikes! Yeah, I don't know about that. Bro. Let's stick to uh, let's stick to brewing. Yeah, for a while. Uh, anyways, you guys have your Ships Ahoy Crispy Boy in front of you. It's a great beer to flabongo, or a great beer just to generally enjoy. It's good in the bird. It's really good in the bird. You gotta feel the bird. You want to count us? Feel in? the bird. <laughs> Three. Two, one, Flabongo! Mm. Oh, baby. Well, that's a wrap. Anything else? That's it, buddy. Party on, Wayne. <laughs> Here we go, boy. Wow. Those guys just dropped the mic over there in AG. So let me jump on. These guys in AGs stayed on mine while I'm over here stressing about these rhymes. They call me Gordo from all these beers. Well, they over there smashing flamingo chairs. I thought I was a ringer, but nah. Those guys are over at Humdinger. Woo! <laughs> hey, that was 5.2% of pure bliss, but that video was insane. If you don't follow Humdinger on social media, by the end of that video, there is something wrong with you. So go over there, follow those guys, figure out what those guys are doing, because it's amazing. Right now, this is our first of two Pilsners. Uh, this can, uh, actually, I met both those guys, Lee and Justin, uh, over at the Central Coast Craft Beer Fest, while they were homebrewers uh, for the South County Homebrewers. And I'm so stoked on these guys. They just opened this year. Uh, they kind of had a, they did a grand opening. Then the pandemic hit. But they are reopened. So definitely stop by. It's in the Royal Grande. Um, for those of you who don't know where that is, it's near Pismo Beach. I know everyone knows where that is. Um, so yeah, humdingerbrewing.com. Again, follow them on social media. Uh, I'm not being biased. That is an amazing, amazing video. And I Definitely appreciate those guys doing that for us. So thank you. Everyone should cheers those guys right now. Uh, we're going to be heading over to Barrel House Brewing. And this is a big boy. So can me, please.
Beer me. Beer me. Woo! Okay. We got the Big Sur from Barrel House Brewing in Paso Robles. This is a double IPA. It is 9-3. So be careful. We're going to pour it, taste it. Let's see what these guys have to say about it. What a day. Boy, I could go for an uncharacteristically smooth double IPA. Hey man, hey. can I offer you a big stir by Barrel House Brewing? Yeah, sure. Cheers. Wow. Boy, that is bursting with citron mosaic hops. 9.3%? How do you get it so smooth? Finely tuned fermentation kinetics. Oh, I know all about that. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's not the line. We changed it. No, no, you're good, you're good. Keep going. Ask me about the... Uh... So why do you call it Big Sur? Well, we call it Big Sur because it reminds us of all of our adventuring on the untamed coastline and fantastic wilds of the Big Sur coastline. Cheers. Thanks for the beer. I should probably get back to work. That was creepy. Start all over. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning, that was yeah, creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the look on his face. Was I not supposed to say anything? I don't, I don't know. Great beer. I I'm, can't wait to go camping again. Uncharacteristically smooth. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll just say cheers. Okay, I'll just say cheers. Okay. Perfect. And action. And action. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, I should probably get back to work. Thanks for the beer. Yeah, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. That's one big serve. Cheers. All right, you know, hey, 
for a double IPA, that thing is smooth and uh, scary good. So, uh, you know, I'm glad these guys kept in those bloopers because these breweries work really hard to make these videos for you guys. Uh, it's not something that they've already created. These guys are doing it specifically for you. So you see how hard it is. It's, it's not easy and uh, I just appreciate what they do. Um, this is easily one of the best brewery spots. I mean, it's, it's amazing if you go visit. Um, there's a lot of room. There's, there's a lot of things to do, hang out with friends. Uh, it's located uh, in tin, what they call Tin City in Paso Robles. Um, you got to spend an entire day there. Uh, but it's a beautiful setting. Um, Paso Robles definitely isn't just wine country anymore. There's some great breweries out there, including Barrel House Brewing. Uh, they got a second location, I believe, in San Luis Obispo as well. Uh, so it's BarrelHouseBrewing.com. This Big Sur, amazing. Thank you guys for sending this, uh, and thanks for the video. Uh, so... We're at the end of the line for Slow County. Um, we've already gone through five tastings of five great beers from five great breweries. Um, so we're gonna take a little music break. Um, so we're gonna show up that map and just show you uh, kind of where we're at. So um, like I said, we just finished uh, San Luis Obispo County, which was presented by Tascadero. We're gonna be heading into Santa Barbara. Actually, we're not. We're gonna be heading to Monterey County where Alvarado Street is next, and that's brought to you by Guido App. Um, before that, I wanna give you guys a little music break. It's uh, time to let loose, get down. We're gonna be listening to Jacob Marquez from After the Smoke, and uh, I'll catch you on the other side of that. Make sure you get that Alvarado Street running. Any of those five beers we had before, you wanna keep tasting, do it. Don't cheat, don't get ahead. Street is coming up, Jacob Marquez is next. Hello everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day. Jacob here from After the Smoke. Thank you so much for tuning in to Surfing Suds at Home Fest. We're doing things a little differently this year, obviously because of the situation that we're all kind of navigating through the stay at home quarantine uh, vibes that we've been on, but we still gotta keep the good vibes rolling. So that's why I wanna give a shout out to Surfing Suds for putting the events like these together. I got some music here, gonna be playing for you guys, uh, reggae vibes. Check out the band uh, After the Smoke at After the Smoke Music on Instagram or After the Smoke Reggae on Facebook. Uh, this first song here is called Roll On Through. You guys can check it out once again on all platforms. Just look up After the Smoke Roll On Through. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy. I'm 
your cure Take these words and sing along with me on my way And it through town got to get there Before the sun goes down Everyone will come and do I'm so far, won't you roll on through Every night six o'clock on the dot I let the music guide you to the spot Everyone will come and do I'm so far, won't you roll on through Yeah Roll on through Won't you roll on through Yeah Roll on through La 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 la, la 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 That's right guys, roll on through, check it out on all platforms, just look up After the Smoke, Reggae, roll on through. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Surf and Suds at Home Fest, you know, uh, we've had the pleasure to perform at the Surf and Suds Ventura Festival a couple of years, and as well as the Santa Barbara Beer Fest. That was an awesome day. So, it, you know, uh, they're definitely family, for sure. So it's been great. Thanks to Andres and all the people that make these events happen. Uh, thank you to the cities for, for uh, allowing, you know, uh, this kind of community that we grow with, uh, with music, uh, vendors, uh, all this all this social environment it's great and we're missing that right now but I'm glad that we can go through this on this media you know it's, it's, it's a great thing so I hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday so far <laughs> uh, this next one is a, a cover of, uh, of one of my favorite songs by uh, by a band called the white stripes uh, it's my uh, reggae rendition of it so I uh, hope you all enjoy this one's uh, seven nation army yeah
White Stripes. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. Please, uh, if you're feeling generous, tips are very much appreciated. The link is on the QR code there at Jacob Marcus 29 Bembo. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to play one more for you all here this afternoon. Uh, this one is called Smile. Uh, you guys can also look it up on all platforms. After the Smoke uh, Reggae on social media, on Facebook, After the Smoke Music on Instagram. And uh, this song is called Smile. So After the Smoke, Smile, wherever it is that you look for your music. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Surf and Suds at Home Fest, thank you for the support over throughout the years. Uh, happy Father's Day. Father's Day coming up tomorrow, so I myself, I'm a proud father of a little girl, so I can't wait to be chilling with her and, and, and barbecuing it up, you know how we do. So I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful Father's Day. Be safe, take care of each other out there, and uh, we'll see you soon. Please check out After The Smoke on all social media. That's After The Smoke Reggae on Facebook, After The Smoke Music on Instagram. Uh, tips are greatly appreciated, so thank you guys so much. Look at all music platforms, wherever you get your music from, after the smoke reggae. Thank you guys, take care. That's not good enough for you, baby. I just want you to know that this man tried to be the best you needed me to be for you. So don't let the outside noise try to change your mind. All right, that's the perfect way to kind of get into our first kind of segment uh, entry into uh, Monterey County and Alvarado Street. So thank you, Jacob Marquez from After the Smoke. Please, if you guys could tip them, these guys are, are uh, just doing it. They're at home and they don't really have any gigs to play right now. So any bit helps. Uh, his Venmo is Jacob-Marquez. That's M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z-29. Jacob-Marquez-29. Please send him even a dollar or two dollars, whatever it is you can do. Uh, it's going to be helpful for him. Uh, so now we are heading into Monterey County, uh, which is brought to you by Guido Beer Me, por favor, it's by Guido App. Uh, we're going to be doing one beer in Monterey County, and it is a banger, Alvarado Street. Uh, I am extremely excited that we got these guys. Um, this is amazing. This is the Mai Tai, uh, what they technically is a pale ale, uh, but they call it an IPA. It's six and a half percent. And uh, again, I'm so excited about this. Let's see what these guys have to say about it. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm in, my name is Dave. I'm with uh, Alvarado Street Brewery here and located in Monterey Bay, California. Right now we're at our production facility in Salinas where we do uh, all the canning and that's where we actually can this bad boy right here, Mai Tai. Um, definitely one of our most sought after and uh, popular IBAs. Uh, just give it an open and uh, try it out. All right, this is Biggie, he's our head brewer. He's going to tell you all about the beer and um, what you can expect from this guy. All right, yeah, so Mai Tai is one of our uh, longest running brews. We've been brewing this since 2014. As you can tell, very pale in color, nice frothy white head. It's a very simple beer, very dry, 100% uh, mosaic hops. We use a couple different hop products to achieve our desired aroma on that, um, but simple malt base neutral ale yeast to just really let the mosaic shine uh, personally we get a lot of a lot of passion fruit lychee cheers maybe some blueberry mm. damn tasty damn tasty yeah um, you know a lot of the things he says one of our favorite beers that we make here um, if you ever want to get any of the beer you go on our website burphopsnow.com we're available for pickup here in Salinas uh, also um, in Monterey at our uh, brewery and grill over there you could also get if you go on burphopsnow.com you can get it delivered right to your door uh, next day delivery so check it out if you guys want to drink some more stuff we got a lot of different offerings come out with a few beers every single week uh, and keep on pumping out new stuff and try to keep it going keep it fresh Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Wow. Uh, Alvarado Street, always <laughs> always putting out some really, really good beers, and Mai Tai is no different. Um, they got three locations. Uh, they got two in Monterey, one in Salinas, which Salinas is their actually brewing facility. Um, I thought it was amazing. 
that Biggie, their head brewer, took some time uh, to send this video uh, along with David, uh, who's uh, been super helpful and uh, a great proponent of the Central Coast Brewers Guild. Um, anyone who loves craft beer knows Alvarado Street is, it's up there. It's way up there. And uh, it's up there on my list. I got friends like Jeff Pollock, if you're watching. I know you love it. Um, everything they make is good, no matter what the style is. Uh, so we're extremely lucky to get this. Uh, super fresh, delivered the next day. Uh, it was awesome. They sent it all the way from, uh, from Salinas down into Carpinteria, and it, and it literally got there the next day. So you can order uh, beers from them. It's next day delivery. It's burphopsnow.com. Burphopsnow.com. Uh, and it will be delivered the next day. Or you can go to their website, uh, Alvarado Street Brewery. Uh, com to check that out as well. Um, if you guys want to try this again, now's the time to do it. Uh, you know what? I really like this one. I'm going to actually give it to my friend Sky uh, from uh, Happy Place Craft Beer. Sky, check this out, dude. You got to try this. Woo! I'm excited about this one. Thanks, Andres. Alvarado Street is actually one of my top favorite breweries. Um, everything that they make is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, Mai Tai is definitely one of those amazing, amazing beers coming out of Alvarado Brewery. So big, big shout out over to Dave and Biggie out there. Keep doing your thing. So let's give this one a shot. Whoo, look at that. What a beauty. I can tell you this much. This is probably one of my top favorite beers and breweries out there, period. Oh my God. Wow. Anytime you got some Alvarado Street Brew for me to sample, please send it over my way because I absolutely love it. What's Gaido? It stands for get your drink on. What are you drinking? Hey, have you ever missed your birthday? Probably because you were stuck at work or lived out of town or heck, there's a world pandemic and you just couldn't get together. Well, Gaido Get Your Drink On has created a way for you to never miss another celebration again. Now, from wherever you are in the world, you can buy a drink anytime, anywhere with the swipe of a finger. Recently, I think we have all missed a few get-togethers and we've missed a few connections. So we've asked a few Guido users who they want to buy a drink for. I am looking forward to getting together with my friend Jamie and heading out to M Special. Hey, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with my good friend Charmaine Bostrick soon. I'd like to buy her a drink. I'd love that. I miss having a drink with my sister, so I'm going to buy her a drink at Rincon Brewery. So I want to buy a glass of wine for my buddy Ryan uh, at uh, his local watering hole for some nice red wine. And I'm going to use Guido because that's the way that uh, works best for all of us. Make sure you try it out. Cheers. My sister's birthday hit right when COVID hit. And unfortunately, we weren't able to celebrate together at our favorite place, the Apiary. So thanks to Guido, I was actually able to buy her a drink. And I can't wait to celebrate with her. A drink for my friend Tiffany <laughs> in Kansas City because she's awesome and Kansas City is not. Damn. Fido. Oh. Hello, my name is Alex. Uh, I want to buy a drink to my dear friend Dane Jaga, who is in. What's Guido? It stands for Get Your Drink On. What are you drinking? Hey, have you ever missed a friend's birthday, missed an engagement or a party because you were stuck at work or lived out of town or heck, there's a world pandemic and you just couldn't get together? Well, Guido Get Your Drink On has created a way for you to never miss another celebration again. Now, from wherever you are in the world, you can buy a friend a drink anytime, anywhere with the swipe of a finger. You know, recently, I think we have all missed a few get togethers and we've missed a few connections. So we've asked a few Guido users who they want to buy a drink for. I am looking forward to getting together with my friend Jamie and heading out to M Special. Hey, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with my good friend Charmaine Bostrick soon. I'd like to buy her a drink. I'd love that. I miss having a drink with my sister, so I'm going to buy her a drink at Rincon Brewery. 
So I want to buy a glass of wine for my buddy Ryan uh, at uh, his local watering hole for some nice red wine. And I'm going to use Guido because that's the way that uh, works best for all of us. Make sure you try it out. Cheers. My sister's birthday hit right when COVID hit, and unfortunately we weren't able to celebrate together at our favorite place, the Apiary. So thanks to Guido, I was actually able to buy her a drink, and I can't wait to celebrate with her. A drink for my friend Tiffany <laughs> in Kansas City because she's awesome and Kansas City is not. Um, Guido! No. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alex. Uh, I want to buy a drink to my dear friend Dane Jaga, who is in the States. Thanks to the Guido app, now I'm able to do that. So, cheers my friend. I miss my brother David and I miss my sister Jackie in England. And wish I could buy them a drink. Well, I can! We have Guido! Oh my god, we couldn't buy people drinks anywhere in the world. I miss my sister in Michigan and I would love to send her a glass of champagne. Cheers. I sure would like to have a drink with Mayor and Lamb. Maybe we can make that happen. <laughs> now that America is starting to reopen again, we want to help you celebrate. So we are giving away $500 in drinks at participating venues. All you have to do is download the app and you are automatically entered to win. So are you feeling lucky? Oh, hey, sorry, guys. I was just uh, buying a buddy a beer on the Guido app. Hey, as you just saw, we are live. This is live, so I uh, apologize for the delay, but you know what? Uh, so the Guido app, uh, as you can see here, download it. Yeah, it's a sweet app. Um, I love buying beers for buddies. Um, obviously, that hasn't been able to uh, happen lately. Um, and as things start transitioning opening, this is a perfect app, you know, like if you live in San Diego or you live in San Francisco or you live in Santa Barbara and you want to buy your buddy a beer uh, that they can enjoy on their birthday, say in Santa Clarita or whether it's in Goleta, um, this app, you need to download it. It's a Guido app, G-Y-D-O app. Uh, get your drink on. Uh, these guys are awesome, Ryan and his wife there. Uh, they're based out of Carpinteria, so, uh, so am I, so I even like them more. Um, make sure to download the app. Uh, it's available in the App Store as well as Google Play. Um, a couple of the breweries uh, in, that are included at our app, Home Fest Brew Lab and Recon Brewery, you can use the app there, uh, as well as Night Lizard, that's gonna be part of our July 25th one. Um, so yeah, so Monterey County, that was awesome, but we are now heading into Santa Barbara County. So we're gonna head into uh, four more breweries, um, and we're gonna start with uh, Third Window in Santa Barbara. Let's go under, hey. My beer guy has to get into place. Uh, so we're gonna start with Third Window in Santa Barbara. This is called The Light. Beer me. And we're gonna take the Guido thing. We're gonna place it right here for now. Um, hey, as you can see, I have no label. Th this is how fresh these beers are, are being uh, canned and brewed. Uh, this is one of the first cans brewed by uh, Third Window. And uh, you know, so let's see what these guys, what Chris has to say about this one. Uh, it's called The Light. It's a Pilsner. It's another Pilsner, 5.4%. Uh, uh, third window out of Santa Barbara. And uh, take it away, Chris. Nice, but the bugs are terrible. How much more time do we have? Two minutes and 45 seconds. That's or, how sorry. far? How much? Three, three minutes and 50 seconds. Left or that's how far that's we've how gone? That's how far you've gone. Oh, that's perfect. That's fantastic. But I also have a question for you. Um, am I supposed to be talking about this beer or all the beers in general? This is great. What's your name? My name is Adeline Parker, and I'm here to ask you some questions about your beer. This is our lager. We call it the light. 
Our intention was to make two loggers, the light and the dark, one light, one dark. We stole that from McSorley's in New York. We thought it was really cool. Uh, this is our first can ever, version 3.9. I think we've made 15 to 20 or so versions of this Pilsner. We really don't brew to style, we brew to what we like. And Eric and I were both kind of super happy with this one. I'm gonna do a slow pour now. It's fine, Pilsner glass. Oh, missed it. Uh, this beer is brewed with Weirman Bark Heirloom Pilsner Malt, uh, Czech Saws hops, a little bit of Sterling on the bittering, uh, at a couple of points in the brewing process that might surprise some people. It's dry hopped, spends three months in tank lagering, uh, no filtering, no fining, which leads to a great deal of flavor. And now we're just going to wait for this foam to go so that we can get that cool thing where there's like the big meringue on top which everyone likes super super cool what is heirloom pick something what is heirloom pilsner malt it is a malt grown on a family farm in germany uh that is not the best yielding barley in the world but it tastes really really delicious so not a lot of people use it anymore okay and um, how old can you be to drink beer? How old can you? Well, how old were you? Never mind. Here's one thing. Um, are any, um, like, how many calories does it have? Can you put beer in, like, normal glasses? Like, normal everyday glasses? Do you want to smell it? Sure. What do you think it smells like? To me, it sort of smells... Sort of, for some reason, this tiny bit like mango. Like mango? I don't know why. It, it smells a bit bitter. I can kind of see it smelling like mango. You might actually be able to smell things. That's pretty good. My last question, mm -hmm. um, why is it like when you pour beer and like it fizzes, mm -hmm. like it sort of looks like an explosion happened. Yeah. Why does it like bubble? Why does it bubble? Yeah, so because beer, that's a very good question by the way, has uh, proteins in it and the carbonation brings them to the top. Uh, and it creates what we call foam. Yeah, I should have I should have had a better answer for that question. That was a really good question. She's actually a really good question ask ask her. Better than me. Yeah, way better than mom. <sighs> That's pretty good. Uh, it's got a nice bitterness. It's quaffable, as you can see. I still have a little bit more in here. Um, my favorite thing about this beer is that bitterness uh, that we add from some unusual uh, hop additions. I think it really balances out the malt character in it nicely. Um, it's got a very floral and also kind of herbal aromatic from the Saz hop. Um, it's just a really delicious, refreshing lager beer. Um, yeah. But I think it is also the most difficult beer to make because there's nothing to hide behind, really. You have to make it well. You have to be clean. You have to adhere to all the things that make brewers great for it to be good. Um, definitely nothing trendy about it that's probably my favorite thing about it it's not a trendy asshole <laughs> yeah all right first off happy father's day chris uh who thinks his daughter Addie did an amazing job uh and how come it took Addie to ask us why beer fizzles uh that's pretty amazing um Actually, probably should sign her up.
Uh, one of the things I look for in breweries um, is things that are fresh, new, um, finding beers that aren't always around, um, tasty, and Third Window checks all those boxes. It's one of my favorite breweries, honestly, uh, in all of the counties that, we, that we're doing this time. Um, they're located in the mill in Santa Barbara, uh, and it's, a, it's actually a really cool place to hang out. They also got uh, a mean sausage plate. Me and my wife just uh, ordered some food there the other day, and it was amazing. Uh, so thank you, Chris and the gang, for that. Um, they have some great Belgians, Saisons, Stouts. It's Like I said, it's always a fresh board, uh, so make sure you visit them. It's called Third Window Brewing in Santa Barbara, thirdwindowbrewing.com. Um, so thank you, guys. I want to thank uh, Coastal Dispensary out of Santa Barbara uh, for being the sponsor for Santa Barbara County. Uh, each of you should receive this in your boxes. It's 15% uh, off uh, your first order, and they do deliver everywhere. Um, they, they have a few locations along the Central Coast. So there's uh, one in Santa Barbara. Uh, there's also one in Lompoc. And uh, uh, again, 15% off of this. Um, make sure you use that. Um, Actually, how many of you out there are smoking right now? I'm sure there's a lot of you guys. Um, and if actually you can order, they deliver. So if you order now, I'm sure before this is over, you might have something delivered to your front door. Uh, and make sure you tell them that we sent you. Um, they encourage and embrace happy, health, healthy lifestyle. Um, we're going to see what these guys have to say about their dispensary that's, uh, again, based out of Santa Barbara and Lompoc. Um, and let's see what they have to say. Hey, Spencer's Ryan here from Coastal Dispensary. We hope you guys enjoy the event. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about our recreational cannabis dispensary here in Santa Barbara and up and down the Central Coast, as well as our delivery service, servicing all of Santa Barbara County. When you come into the storefront, uh, we have about 40 different options of cannabis on display for you to browse, as well as an additional 100 or so varieties on the menu uh, to suit any kind of user experience that you're looking for. For those of you that like edibles, uh, we have just about any kind of candy, drink, soda that you could possibly imagine infused with THC or CBD. Come on in. Uh, for more advanced consumers, uh, we have several different options. Uh, we have large display cases here with uh, 40 to 50 different options of concentrate. Uh, we also have vapes from all the major uh, brands in California. We have topicals, we have therapeutic products containing just CBD, just about anything you could possibly desire, we have in store, uh, along with apparel to uh, go along with our lifestyle brand. Uh, if you look inside your swag bag, there's a coupon for 15% off that's good for retail or delivery. We hope to see you soon and enjoy the rest of today's event. Thanks, guys. All right, Ryan, well, thank you for that. Uh, and thank you, Skyler, uh, for, uh, you know, for being a sponsor for Santa Barbara County, uh, the At Home Fest. Um, Coastal encourages and embraces a healthy, healthy and happy lifestyle through premium cannabis uh, products. And so make sure to check them out. It's coastaldispensary.com. That's coastaldispensary.com. Follow them on social media. Um, or you can order on Weed Maps as well. Uh, they deliver from Paso Robles down to Camarillo, and there is a lot of you guys within that area. So make sure you guys take advantage of this. This is, this is a big deal, 15% off your first order. Um, and if you guys um, should have received this in there, if you didn't, let us know. Make sure you get it. Uh, if you're in the Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara or Lompoc area, just stop by. Uh, they got plenty of great products to be in there. So tell them we sent you. And again, thank you guys. Um, so next up, we got Captain Fatty's. It's... Uh, the Blue, bear me. This is Captain Fatty's The Blue. It's an IPA. Uh, these guys are based out of Goleta. Also have a second location in Santa Barbara. And uh, let's see what they have to say about The Blue. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to uh, Captain Fatty's Galita Taproom location. 
Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm a bartender here, and today we're going to be talking about our West Coast Blue IPA. Uh, this is a core IPA here at Captain Fatty's. It has been for several years. Uh, it's nice citrus, tropical uh, fruit notes on the on the nose. Super light-bodied, crisp, and dry. Extremely refreshing, especially on a hot summer day. Uh, it's slightly less malted than other traditional regional IPAs, which really uh, lets those fruit notes come out, uh, both on the nose and in the flavor, uh, drinking it. Goes down super smooth, 7.6%, uh, so you know, only takes a few to have a good time and keep you refreshed during the summer. Uh, well, yeah, thank you guys for your support. I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, we are still open for pickup and free delivery, no minimums. Uh, hope to see you guys around and come through. Thanks so much. All right. Well, how was that? That was a, uh, that was a really good IPA. Uh, I know these guys uh, personally, and they make a hell of a good beer. Um, I'm often in there for their sours, and uh, they also have some really good IPAs, including the blue. So thank you, guys. Um, they always have the fire. And uh, actually, they have a, a wood fire place uh, there to order some food there uh, all the time now. Uh, it's tropical, juicy, danky, everything that those guys said. Uh, they're open for business in both locations. So they got a, uh, their main facility out in Goleta, and then they also have uh, a spot in Santa Barbara in the Funk Zone. Uh, and they're both open for business. Uh, you can pick up from their tap room if you want to do that, or get it delivered. It's free delivery. Um, you know, lots of hops. It's great. Um, there is something I saw on that board or on their website that I really want to get. It's the pineapple mango calypso sour. Holy smokes, that sounds good. So it's captainfatties.com, captainfatties.com. Follow them on social media. Uh, thank you guys so much. So speaking of Galita, Go Galita is our official title sponsor for uh, our Surf and Suds at Home Fest. And uh, it's also our, pre our uh, presenting sponsor for the, or sorry, it is our presenting sponsor for the event. I came up with my top three things to do in Galita. Um, so we're going to throw up a splash screen. It's going to show you guys what I think are the top three things to do. One, visit the craft breweries. We got M Special, Droughtsman, Hollister, along with Captain Fatty's that we just saw. Uh, you can also check out Santa Barbara Cider and Galita Red Distilling Company. Uh, number two, check out Galita Beach. It's an awesome spot. Uh, it's located right at the entrance of UCSB and features a picturesque pier that you can stroll on and fish. Uh, and on your way out, stop by Beachside for some credible fish tacos. Uh, number three, Zoto's Bowling. Uh, we had our staff Christmas party there, and I don't really remember the end because it was amazing. And we had a ton of options on great craft beer, and so did my staff, and it was awesome. So a uh, huge craft beer selection, and who doesn't love the global? So those are my top three things to do in Goleta. Um, if you go to gogalita.com, you can see some more incredible things to do there. Um, and see what, they else, what else they have to offer. Uh, thank you to Courtney and April for all that you do for the Galita community and for supporting us. We appreciate it. Um, so we are heading into my hometown, uh, Carpinteria. We're lucky enough to have two breweries uh, there that are going to be joining us today. Um, we have three breweries, and we have a meadery in a small Carpinteria. So uh, I'm a very, very lucky person. So we're going to start with Rincon Breweries. I'm going to slide this over. Beer me. And uh, we're going to do the Lorena Lager uh, from Rincon Brewery, like I said, is based out of Carpinteria, but also has a second location in Ventura and a third one in Santa Barbara. So let's see what those guys have to say about their uh, Lorena Lager and their brewery um, while I have a little sip. Hey everybody, what's up from Rincon Brewery? Excited to be a part of the At Home Beer Fest Surf and Suds 2020. Sent you our delicious Lorena Lager, Queen of the Coast. Delicious Mexican lager. But before we get into the beer, I'd like to give you a brief introduction into Rincon Brewery and each of our locations. Enjoy. 
In the fall of 2014, Rincon Brewery opened its doors in the quiet beach town of Carpinteria, California, striving to provide delicious craft beers and quality food for the local community. With strong ties to the community, the ocean, and thriving farms, we've continued to hone our beer selections and menu offerings, all the while continuing to grow our brand, our reputation, and our RV family. December of 2018, we opened our second brewery location and restaurant just down the 101 freeway in the vibrant Ventura community. Giving our brewery team more space and more equipment, this new facility continues to allow us to produce and improve our beer selections while offering the community a wonderful facility to gather and enjoy some RB goodness. Rincon Brewery proudly features a number of different local artists, including quarterly rotating art, where customers can come in and purchase art right off the walls. It's a wonderful addition to the facility. Rounding out our locations on the Central Coast, Rincon Brewery will soon be opening a tap room in the famous Santa Barbara Funk Zone. Stop by one or all of our locations to enjoy our delicious craft beers and quality, well sourced menu offerings. And speaking of menu items, not only is our Lorena Lager one of the most popular beers, it is a very important ingredient in one of our most popular menu items, our Lorena Lager Marinated Tri-Tip. RB always uses quality grass-fed hormone and antibiotic-free beef that is marinated for a minimum of 48 hours in our special blend of citrus, herbs, and spices, and of course, plenty of Lorena Lager. Tacos, tri-tip sandwich, or potato skins, Cali burrito, or on a salad, there are plenty of ways you can try our tri-tip. And now I'd like to introduce Chaz Cloud, our head brewer for Ridcon Brewery, to talk about our delicious Lorena Lager. Hi everybody, I'm Chaz Cloud with Rincon Brewery. I uh, hope you're all enjoying the Surf and Suds Home Fest. Uh, COVID-19 kind of messed up the beer festival season and it's really nice that technology can bring us all together and uh, we can do beer festivals in this kind of format. It's also nice not to have to drive home afterwards. Um, so the beer you should have gotten from us in your box uh, is our Lorena Lager. This is an amber style or amber Mexican lager. Um, we just finished brewing a batch of beer here, a uh, batch of our hazy IPA. It's freaking hot, um, so I am parched. So, let's get into it. Uh, this is one of our original beers uh, some from when we first opened about five and a half years ago. Uh, like I said, amber style Mexican lager. Gotta have a clean glass. Amber style Mexican lager. Um, there's no corn in this. We do use a Mexican lager yeast. Uh, log Mexican lager yeast will help us with like a nice crisp, refreshing finish. Uh, nice kind of snap at the end. Is a lager yeast, so it ferments cold. We get a nice clean flavor profile. No fruity esters uh, that you, you would find with nail yeast. Um, yeah, it started out kind of as a piano lager, um, and we've actually made it a little bit lighter uh, through the different iterations. Um, so I wouldn't even venture to call this a Vienna Lager. It's a little too light for that. But we do use a lot of Vienna malt in it. 
uh, kind of the backbone of the malt bill is the enamel. So you're going to get a nice toastiness of toasted, nice bit of toasted bread. Um, but still has some malt character to it. Um, yeah, this is like the perfect beach beer. Um, I'm probably going to drink this whole six pack today for how hot it is lately. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys are all enjoying the, uh, enjoying the festival. Please come by. We're, uh, we're open limitedly. Uh, we have a lot less seating than we used to. Uh, it's kind of counter service at our Ventura location as well as CARP and uh, trying, to, trying to keep everybody healthy and safe and still keep, uh, keep the beer flowing. We're making more so you guys keep drinking it. Um, this beer is available in cans currently. Uh, we kind of intermittently can it uh, so you won't find it all the time available but right now we do have some out as one of the main reasons for Santa Fe is our freshest uh, canning can run uh, today or at the moment and yeah I'd love to see you guys in person when it's uh, good to do that and hopefully in a year from now we can see each other at a tent and a real at a real uh, year festival ready to go out there and yeah party it up again Chaz Cloud Rincon Brewery Arena Lager enjoy <laughs>
Um, a little bit about the beer you might have from us in your box. Uh, so we're a pretty small brewery. We brew about one and a half barrels per batch. Uh, so we came up a little bit short on getting everybody the same beer. Uh, so most of you have the Smooth Hopperator. It's uh, an American Pale Ale, all U.S. Uh, malt. Um, a little bit of malt from Admiral Malting up in the Bay Area, as well as uh, some organic two-row from Great Western Malt. Um, great, uh, great balance Pale Ale. It's not too hoppy or bitter. Uh, not super malty. Um, kind of right in the middle, 5.2%, really great. Nice, easy, light, crushable beer for this time of year. And then the, uh, uh, some of you also received the Cause and Effect, which is our Belgian Blonde. It's 6.8%, uh, packs a little bit more punch, uh, bone dry, but still has that uh, classic Belgian quality. Um, even with the dryness, it, it's got a really nice body on it. Uh, Great beer, one of my favorite ones up on our board right now. Um, yeah, so hopefully you like the beers, and like I said, we're here in Carpentria, uh, home of the original Surf and Suds. Um, take you guys on a quick tour. We just finished brewing. Um, and yeah, thanks for uh, supporting your local brewery. All right, guys, this is our front, kind of our front porch area. Carpentry Avenue right here on the left, kind of down on the far uh, west end of town. Take you up on the patio here, we got our Cascade hops growing. Doing pretty well this year actually. I think this is like their fourth or fifth year in the ground. We usually harvest these once a year and do a little 10 gallon wet hop batch just for the fun. Put the two beers in your guys' boxes. This is our tasting room zone. Kind of got everything broken down right now. We're in the middle of brewing. This is our little one and a half barrel uh, brew system. Been brewing on this for about five and a half years now. Brewer Dave, drinking all the profits. And we've been working on our uh, 10 barrel brew house. It's been a work in progress. Peter up there working on our glycol system. So later this year we'll be brewing on this system as well as keep bringing on our old system forever. And that's about it guys. Uh, if you haven't been down to visit us, we're in Carpentria, California. Um, we've usually got about 14 to 20 beers on tap. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the uh, at home Serpent Suds Beer Fest. Cheers. All right, those are my dudes, and I actually, um, uh, I'm really excited that you guys all got to try one of their beers because Brew Lab is literally one of my favorite beers, or sorry, breweries. Um, not only because they're in my hometown, but uh, as I said, mentioned earlier uh, when talking about Third Window, I'm really into uh, going into a spot and just seeing really like new beers on the list, um, stuff that's fresh. I mean, this the can that you guys got literally was brewed. Uh, the day before we shipped out. So, I mean, that's how fresh that is, and uh, they, they pulled it together, and I really appreciate them. Um, so it's, uh, their beer list is always on fire. Um, anytime you're making your way through the Central Coast, if you guys can stop at Carpinteria, there's some really good breweries, including Brew Lab, uh, that you can pull over. Actually, get up on Carpinteria Avenue, in a matter of 15 seconds, you're in front of the doorstep. Um, 
So uh, you can order for pickup, and uh, rumor has it that they are uh, looking to get their beers out into the distribution world uh, a little more as they're going to move into that 10 barrel system uh, that you saw there for uh, a little bit in their video. Uh, it's brewlabcraft.com, based in Carpinteria. Please, if you uh, stop in Carpinteria, that's the spot to, to try. So, um, Speaking of Carpinteria, um, the way we got started is Carpinteria Serving Suds. Um, we're this year, uh, August 15th, is going to be our eighth year doing the event. And uh, these breweries have been a part of it the entire time. We've also had a mainstay. It's called Cornerstone Reggae. Uh, and these guys have been uh, our headliners for the last eight years. Uh, I've been asking for them to maybe come up with a Serpent Suds song. And uh, guess what? Here is our debut of Surf and Suds, a song by Cornerstone Reggae out of Santa Barbara. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Let's check it out. All right, what do you guys think? Oh my God, I'm so stoked on that. Uh, no place I'd rather be, all of you and all of me. Oh, I love that song. I'm so beyond stoked. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you to Cornerstone. Thank you to Alfredo. You guys are awesome. Patrick Muniz for, for shooting a lot of that video. That was awesome. Uh, so we're leading into a vendor segment, okay? So here's one of my vendors. Uh, all of you guys should have received one of these in your boxes, Acorn Bar. Um, Acorn Bar, uh, for us, has been a, a great supporter. <laughs> it has, it's super snack. I actually have one here because this is going to be my snack uh, for later on. And uh, this is what's going to keep me going. So we have Acorn Bar. Uh, we have Beer Muse, who's another vendor that we're going to do in a little product giveaway. And we have Chop Top, who's another 
product giveaway. So uh, acornbar.com, uh, you should have all received it. Uh, beer Muse, uh, they got kind of beer accessories for everybody, pendants, earrings, coasters. Uh, we can go ahead and roll the video if you want and show some of these uh, product giveaways. All right, so those are some of our vendors. Uh, the last one you saw was Chop Top. Um, you each should have received a Surf and Suds ring. Actually, can I grab one of those rings, Brianna? So my lovely wife's gonna show us one of the rings real quick. So uh, these are the rings that you should have got. There was a blue one, there's a pink one. It's a Surf and Suds bottle cap. Um, so these guys, uh, Chop Top, and uh, Tony's gonna join me because we're gonna call a couple of you guys right now, but Chop Top um, is a, a company that uh, upcycles used uh, products uh, from, usually they do bottles. So right now they do, uh, let's do the cups, vases, bowls, candles, lighting, other home goods, and uh, they've been a great proponent. So Tony, what I thought we should do. So we have these cool beer muse pendants, and we have a keychain. I wanted to call people. And we, we also have, have a away? Surf and Suds growler that's gonna come over right now. Can I keep them? You cannot keep them. All right. We're gonna call people and give them away. All right, so well, we have that. And we have this sweet Surf and Suds 32 ounce growler from Drink Tanks. Don't show me that, man. Okay. So we're going to call a couple people right now. So I'm going to jump on the phone. Please answer, okay? So I'm calling Casey right now. Let's see what Casey's doing. And we're going to put you on speaker. Come on, Hopefully Casey. they answer, huh? If they don't Last answer. time they didn't answer. Is this Casey? Hey, Casey, is this, are you, are, you, uh, are you joining us today at the Surf and Suds at Home Fest? Hell yeah, we got like a whole bunch of people here. Yeah! Dude, you're live right now. You, live. Are, you are live right now Chilling. on the show. How many of there are you guys? <laughs> Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Wait, Casey, what's, what's, been, what's been your favorite uh, beer so far? What happened? What has been your favorite beer so far? Good start. Yes. Seven point five. Seven, eight. That was the way to start it, right? They like the sour and they like the lager. So okay. Like, okay. Freaking liquid uh, gravity. Liquid and gravity and Central Coast. Guys, right? Those are two San Luis Obispo breweries. All right. Well, hey, yeah. Casey, we uh, we truly appreciate you guys uh, joining us. And uh, so I don't know if you can see this, but you just won this thirty-two ounce Surf and Suds growler that's oh, made by yeah. Drink Takes. Congratulations. So, Casey, I'm going to have you text me your address, and I'm going to put this in the mail next week. And, uh, again, we just wanted to say thank you guys for joining us. Congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, well, we'll see you on July 25th. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right. No, thank you. All right. Everybody say thank you. Bye. Bye. Woo! All right. Well, hey, Casey's pumped. Uh, so I'm going to call one more person. We're going to give away this beer. Uh, it's called Beer Muse Pendants. Pretty sick. Those are awesome. They look great on your hat. They would look good. Like yeah, great. they would. Right, this side. 
This side, yeah. And uh, a sweet beer muse. It's a hop keychain. Nice. So one more call. So let's see if this guy's around. We're calling Mike. Mike, if you're listening, please answer. Because uh, now's the time, buddy. Now's the time. And we just don't want to look like jerks. That's true. Speaker. Speaker. Here we go. Drum roll. It's ringing. Hey, Andres. Mike. Hey. How's what's it going? going? How you guys? Right here, man. Hey, hey, what's going on, man? How you guys doing? Doing, uh, doing well. Let me put you on speaker real quick. Okay. <laughs> All right, here you go. Mike, how many people you got over there? We got three right now and a dog. Oh, how, how hammered is the dog? <laughs> the dog is pretty hammered. He's had a few dog treats and, <laughs> and stuff, but yeah, he is. Okay, we're, we're watching out for him. Sweet. So, so are you guys having a good time? We're having a great time right now. Tony, you want to ask him anything? Yeah, man. How does it feel to be a winner right now? Yeah, we're here in Nolita right now. We got the home brewers over here enjoying some good beer. We got some food on the way. So, we're, yeah, we're definitely enjoying it. Yeah, merchandise going on. We got my Guido shirt on. Nice. We got some all of our glasses. Absolutely. Great time. Well, we got some news for you, Mike. Uh, you've won. Yeah! You're a winner. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You win some Beer Muse pendants. We got some and, Beer Muse uh, pendants. Also a Beer Muse keychain. It's a hop keychain. Awesome. So, you know what we'll do is just drop it off with those July 25th tickets that you already got. I already got them. Absolutely. I got a couple of tickets already coming. So, definitely um, going to throw out the vibe for July 25th. So, absolutely. It's awesome. That's great. All right. Well, thank you, Mike, for joining us again, and uh, we'll see you on July 25th. Hey, hold on, Mike, real quick. What's What's been one of your favorite beers so far? Honestly, the first one has been uh, a great one for I see a us. trend happening. Uh, I think the ladies' choice right now has been the Captain Fatty's Blue. Woo, okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I can gonna, see that. Okay, hey, well, make sure that you guys go into uh, votebeerfest.com and you guys can leave some notes and win some tickets to the Carp Surfing Sets. We'll, we'll do it, and we already downloaded the uh, Guido app already. As well. Yeah, okay. It's all happening. Yeah, well, hey. I'll buy the first five pints, whoever uh, uh, finds me on Guido. I'll buy the first five pints. <laughs> oh, he's saying whoever downloaded the Guido app and sees Mike Zaragoza, he will buy you the first pint. First five pints. Oh, five Bingo. pints. Five, five pints. pints. Download the app and find my Zaragoza. That's that's a hey treat hey. I live in Carpinteria, so go ahead and buy me a pine at Brew Lab, okay? Uh, I, I got you, man. I got you. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, take See care, Mike. Thank you guys. Bye. It. Woo! Awesome, dude. Some happy winners. Air five. Air five. Boom! Hey, that was amazing. I'm so glad that those guys were so stoked. Uh, leading us into our July 25th event. Yeah. Um, do you have something to show for that? I actually do. Do you? Hey, are you going to be here for July 25th? I hope so. Yeah, I you better be. Because yeah. if you aren't, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't either. So let's see. Uh, actually, let's, ch let's show them all the breweries on um, the July 25th okay. one. Perfect. Hey, Tony Grimes, guy's multitasking all day long. So he's basically behind the camera, co-hosting, and trying the beers. That's a multitasker. So July 25th is our next one. Uh, it's our next at-home fest. Uh, this one... We ventured outside of the uh, 805 area for part of it. So we have 14 Cannons, Angel City Brewery, Belchin Beaver, Brewery Draconum, Collie Dodd Beer, Flying Embers, Hard Kombucha, Founders Brewing, Night Lizard, Pizza Port, Pocock Brewing, Red Tandem Brewery, Sierra Nevada, Telco Brewing, Three Weavers, and tickets are on sale now at surfbeerfest.com. That's surfbeerfest.com. All of you guys will get emails uh, to purchase the July 25th event. So far, all of our events have sold out in less than two weeks. Uh, we expect this one to do the same. Um, I'm actually going to bring Tony back, if that's okay. Tony, yeah. are you good at coming back? Uh, do you want me to? I want you to come back. Right. Because we're heading into our next uh, break. It's a musical break, and it's, uh, it's actually Wall of Tom.
And Tony is in Wall of Tom along with his wife, uh, Tommy. So tell us about Wall of Tom real quick. Yeah, it's uh, a band my wife and I started about 17, 18 years ago, based out of Los Angeles originally. At the time, we were just friends. And uh, oh, I'm glad started... that worked out. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it didn't work out for Fleetwood Mac, but <laughs> it did for us. Uh, but yeah, we've been playing together for a long time. Um, we're going to show a couple videos right now of our latest songs. Uh, the first one is from uh, about two years ago. We we filmed uh, a video for this up at uh, La Cuesta Ranch. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and took over that whole area. Uh, it's called Tornado, and it's loosely based off of a movie you might know back from the 40s, 50s. Um, what is it called? Yeah, it's Wizard of something. Oz. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. Boss. And this, yeah. Wizard of Boss. Boss, yeah, I think. Yeah. And then the second one is a new new song we just came out with uh, about a month ago called Drive Through Fire. Uh, and it's loosely based off of uh, uh, destructive personalities and uh, relationships that get reborn out of the ashes. Oh. It's pretty deep, I know. Hey, do you guys want to check it out? You should check it out. Let's check it out. Anyway, wallofTom.com. Lots of t-shirts and fun things going on. And uh, if you look at our Instagram page, and, we uh, like to have fun. So. Just uh, real quick, uh, yeah. your wife Tommy just actually finished all her book series too, right? She did, yeah. And what are she those books? She finished a, a three-part series uh, called the Frankie Spencer series. They're all, it's called This Rock in My Heart is the first one, This Roll in My Soul, and This Rock and Roll Dream, which is the third uh, conclusion to the three-part series. Tommy, you are well-versed. <laughs> but fun reads, uh, nonfiction, and uh, loosely based off of experiences out of Hollywood in the rock and roll industry. Where can I get those? Heck yeah. You can get them on uh, Amazon, uh, the Kindle. You can get them on uh, any of the major outlets for downloading books. And then, yeah, physical copies available too. All right. Yeah, or we'll just come over and read them to you. Oh, that's cool. So, How much do you charge for that? It's expensive, but it's worth it. <laughs> Does it come with beer? <laughs> comes with beer. Sweet. Yeah. I'm in. All right. Well, hey, you guys videos. ready to check this out? Um, hey, I've actually seen both these videos, and uh, I think you guys are going to be blown away. Um, those are great. Also, uh, if you guys are interested in tipping, again, these guys aren't playing anywhere. There's nowhere to play. So uh, their Venmo is? Wall of Tom. Wall of Tom. That's super easy. So yeah, if you feel like tipping, go ahead. So just to give you guys a quick, uh, we are going to be going into Ventura County. So the next beer will be uh, the Bubblehead Blood Orange by Poseidon Brewing. See you on the flip side.
All right, what'd you guys think? Wall of Tongue. Whew. Good job, Tony and Tommy and the entire band. You guys did a great job. Remember, if you really liked it, um, please, these guys, like I said, aren't playing anywhere right now. So uh, if you guys could tip them, their Venmo is Wall of Tom. Next up, we are heading into Ventura County. This is the last four beers uh, and the last county. We're going to be starting with Poseidon's uh, Bubble. Let's see. We got it's the Blood Orange. It's the Bubblehead Blood Orange Pale. So go ahead and get that. Crack it open. We got four breweries. We're starting with Poseidon. We're going to be going from Poseidon into Institution. And then we're going to be at Seaward and finishing with Tarantula Brewing. So those are the last four. So go ahead and pour yourself a beer. Uh, special thanks to the Happy Place Craft Beer uh, in Sky, who you guys have already met during the Alvarado segment. Um, the Happy Place is literally uh, my happy place. It's uh, got an amazing craft beer selection out there in Satakoy. Uh, if you go into the Beer Cave, uh, Beer Cave is amazing. Uh, you're going to find beers that you're not going to find anywhere else. And uh, the best part is, if you follow them, it's called at We Deliver Liquor on Instagram, and you write them, they will deliver your beer to you. So if you're done with this and you want to still drink, hit them up on Instagram, and they'll deliver it to you. Uh, so we're going to be going into, like I said, we got the bubble head blood orange pale ale from Poseidon. And... I really uh, appreciate this video. Uh, two of these guys I really love. So let's see what these guys have to say about their beer. Hey guys, I'm Brian, uh, owner and head brewer at Poseidon Brewing Company in Ventura, California. And yes, there is a bit of an accent, and the first question I always get, uh, where is it from? So, South Kakalaki. I'm Anthony, I am the brewer at Poseidon Brewing Company. We are proudly coming up to our sixth anniversary in August. So, without further ado, the reason why we're really here is to drink some of these beers, these tasty beers. And what we have for you today is our Bubblehead Blood Orange, one of our seasonal uh, heavy hitters. Uh, right here we have a, a really nice, beautiful can art that's uh, a dive helmet with a, a really nice octopus on top of it. There's a company called Blind Tiger that does all of our can art. They do a phenomenal job for us, and I think it's worth uh, showcasing right here before we actually even crack into this beer. All right, so. We're doing this? Let's do this. See if we remember how to actually pour a beer. Mm -hmm. I can tell you went to uh, beer pouring school, same as I did. You know, <laughs> it's not the best, but you really want that thick head for all the aroma to come rolling through. That's exactly right. That's what I'm about to get into. Okay, so so let's break this thing down. So this beer is a. Uh, it's in our top three every year we only brew it about five to six months out of the year and this beer is a little bit special to us because we actually use local sourced blood oranges from king and king ranch and then that's supported by a malt bill of like two row pale pale malt and then a uh, light crystal malt to give it a little bit of sweetness i believe we're about like c30 on that and then the two really uh citrus focused hops are centennial and Cascade, which play well with the malt, and it plays really well with the actual citrus that we put into the beer. The, uh, the hops really come through with the, the malt that we use to get a really beautiful, just slight sweetness that reminds you of the actual blood orange itself. A slight pininess comes rolling through. So this beer, it comes in, it's a really sessionable uh, pale ale. We're looking at about 5.6. Uh, ABV on this and about 32 IBUs um, and just a phenomenal drinking beer for summertime. This beer is definitely a pleaser from the freezer. What I like to refer to is a little bit of a, a, a lip liquor. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers!
You can uh, order Bubblehead Blood Orange along with a lot of our other fine beers online at thesidonbrewingco.com. Um, we are happy to walk it out to the curb for you. Um, or you could come into the tasting room and try it yourself. I'd like to end this with a little bit of a, a toast that uh, is near and dear to my heart. And uh, everybody can repeat after me if they want to. But I'm going to go run, run through it. So here, here it goes. So here's to it because we all do it. And if you don't do it, you should be led to it, tied to it, and made to do it. And if you still won't do it, take me to it. I'll do it because fuck it, I'm used to it. Cheers, guys. <laughs>
So there you go. And the stats on this beer, it's 4.7%, 30 IBUs. Uh, if you check out your can, we also have uh, the ingredients and the canned on date on all our beers, so you can know how fresh your beer is and also what the ingredients are in it. So in this beer, we've got Mosaic Hops and Nugget. Uh, Mosaic, newer hop that I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, very popular style right now. Very intense, uh, super fruity. Um, and then Nugget, which is a little bit more of an old school hop that's a little bit more earthy and piney and resiny. So we combine kind of those two contrasting hop styles to give this beer a well-rounded hop profile. And uh, let's get into it. So definitely picking up the mosaic up front, blueberry, citrus, a little piney, and then you just get a little bit of that resiny dank character as well from the nugget. And then on the flavor, uh, really clean, uh, refreshing, super crisp malt profile. So the hops really stand out in this beer. The malt kind of takes a back seat. Uh, these beers are supposed to be super sessionable, uh, which is, you know, the brewers here, uh, probably favorite style of beer, just a hop forward beer uh, that's also a little bit lower in ABV, um, just, you know, something that you could drink a couple of. So, you know, we love hoppy lagers, pale ales, session IPAs, um, anything that's got that big hop aroma and flavor, um, but a little less aggressive ABV and bitterness is something that uh, we really enjoy, especially during the summer, which is why we brewed this beer. Get another sip here. Yeah, so if you're drinking along, you can tell when you bring it up to your mouth, your nose, you can smell all those uh, great hops, the citrus, the blueberry, everything. And when you drink it, um, it's gonna drink a little bit lighter in style. Um, and of course, it's not gonna have that kind of biting, bracing bitterness that you'd expect from like a West Coast IPA, which uh, we love. Uh, most of the beers we brew are gonna be, you know, in that realm as far as West Coast IPA um, and we're, you know, super hoppy pale ales. Um, but for sessionable beers, uh, when you're looking for something a little more mellow, uh, this one really hits the spot. So if you have any other questions, check us out on our social channels at Institution Ales. Um, have a great virtual beer fest, guys. Cheers. Hop heads unite. If you guys want to meet up and you love hoppy beers or West Coast style beers, I'll see you at Institution Ales in Camarillo. Uh, these guys have, uh, actually, really quickly, if you look uh, on the can on date, it's another uh, beer that was canned uh, fairly soon, and uh, you guys should be super excited about another fresh beer. Uh, they got two locations, uh, their main brew facility out of Camarillo, and then they actually have a spot right on State Street in Santa Barbara. Uh, both the locations are open. Um, these guys have been making things happen and uh, putting out crazy good beers. I myself am a hophead, so I'm a fan. Um, everything they do is just super clean, uh, clean crisp, and uh, super hoppy. So um, let's see. I'm also uh, getting into these four percenters. Uh, I play golf, and uh, my wife allows me to do that every now and then. So when I go out, I uh, enjoy drinking beers that taste good and aren't going to get me super hammered. So these four percenters are perfect for it. Um, this is leading me into, uh, as Sean said, uh, our Father's Day segment. So this is Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day again to all you amazing fathers. Um, but well, I want to send you through a, a quick segment on Father's Day that includes uh, Institution Ales and some other breweries that are uh, participating this weekend as well. So Tony, let's... Uh, Let's head on over to the Father's Day segment. So this is uh, Jason Henry, uh, head brewer and co-owner of Seaward Brewing uh, with his sons from last Father's Day. Uh, we're super excited to chase their beer soon. This is Mark Hyatt, owner of Rincon Brewery, uh, along with his son, Colin. And uh, we've already tried their beers. And then uh, coming up is our own Tony Grimes with his children. Oh, yeah. You can make some good-looking kids, dude. And uh, this one coming up is, is uh, Jamie and Jib Dienhofer from uh, Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company. 
And uh, we're going to be talking about them in the second, too, as well. Um, I miss you, Jim. And this is me and my little boys. This is my son, Easton, and my big son, Noah. They're only uh, 17 years apart, and uh, they love each other already. And then this is uh, Sean and his brother, as well as his father. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about that. So uh, as Sean mentioned in his video, um, him and his brother Ryan and Father Roger own institution, institution Ales from, uh, since 2013. I talked to him about it. He said, it's great working with family. Like anything, there are challenges, but we all have our own skill sets that we bring to, get, uh, bring to the business and try to stay out of each other's way. So um, that is pretty amazing. Um, we came across this video of another father and son team uh, that's uh, one of the local breweries here on the Central Coast. It's a uh, Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company. It's uh, Jamie and Jim Dienhofer who started uh, Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company around the same time we started surfing suds. We're uh, just a couple years off. And uh, they quickly became great proponents of our events, uh, including the Bealton Wine and Chili Festival and the Bealton Brew Fest. So I got to know them uh, fairly well, and uh, I call them both friends. Um, sadly, we did lose uh, Jim uh, last year. Um, but I thought this video just kind of encapsulates kind of just a perfect dream of, of you and your dad being able to do something together um, that you something that you guys love. So let's watch this uh, video um, that's uh, by Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company about Jamie and Jim and uh, their fig fam. And let's see what, how you guys feel about it. To say Figaro Mountain Brewing Company was started with a dream is kind of cliche, but in reality it's true. Um, I bugged my father for many years to start a locally owned brewery. It was a pipe dream, but finally broke him down and we did it. You know, and in 2010, we opened our doors and it was a dream come true. Not only because we started a locally owned brewery from scratch, but I was able to work with my father and my best friend and it's been an amazing ride. And I'm so proud of what we've been able to accomplish, not only with my father and I, but with what you guys have helped us do. We know about all of the blood, sweat, and tears into this, and it's been quite a ride. And we've had a lot of fun along the way, sometimes too much fun. And a few of you out there, well, remain nameless, but uh, a little overboard. Anyways. We've done some great things along the way, but we're still a long way from great. And to see the passion that the individuals and teams have put into this brand is amazing. And to be able to not only go to work and work your butt off, but to want to hang out with those same people after work, that's a testament to the team we've built. And it's really great to be a part of it. We have been able to make some amazing liquid along the way. Quality is apparent and you guys have really worked hard at that. But we've also been able to accomplish a community, Fig Fam, and everyone who comes in our doors experiences that every day. Right now we're at an inflection point in our company that's very exciting. We have nine plus years of successes and failures to learn from. And now we have the rest of the story that we're still writing. More chapters to come and you guys are all going to be a part of it. So on behalf of my father and I and my family, let's go make some memories, some quality beer, and have some fun along the way. Cheers. All right. Hey, you know, uh, as somebody who knew uh, Jim personally, that's uh, it's a really nice video to watch. And uh, Jamie, Jamie, I love you. Um, 
So happy Father's Day weekend, guys. Um, as Jim would say, hey, motherfucker. All right, so we're, at, we're actually going to call somebody. It's another person. His name is Daniel Fake. We're going to call him, and it's, this isn't fake. Um, he and his father and his brother are enjoying Father's Day weekend together. And uh, I want to call them and see how they're doing today because they're joining us uh, from Sacramento. Hello? Hey, Daniel. Yes. How's it going? This is Andres with Surfing Suds. Hey, Andres. How's how it going? Great. Yeah? Having a good time. All right, man. So, uh, so you're there with, uh, with, your, with your dad and your brother, is that correct? Yep. With my, my dad, my parents, my brothers here, my sister, my brother in law, we're all hanging out. All right. And uh, so, how's it going? We're having a lot of fun. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, hey, so, so uh, it, it is Father's Day weekend, and that's kind of why you decided to kind of get up there, right? Because you're from, uh, where, where exactly are you from? So, um, I live in uh, San Luis Obispo. Um, my uh, rest of my family is kind of up in the Bay Area around the Bay Area, so we're up here in uh, Sacramento at my brother's house. All right, man. Well, uh, and your dad's name is Dan, too, correct? <laughs> we have the same name, yes. All right. Well, you tell your dad, Dan, that I said Happy Father's Day, <laughs> and uh, we're actually going to be sending your dad a uh, one of our... Mike, can you bring that 32-ounce growler? So we're actually going to be sending your dad one of these. It's, uh, it's a Surf and Suds 32-ounce growler by Drink Tanks. And uh, as a special Father's Day gift. Hey, Andres, I'm listening. This is Dan. Thank Dan, you, Dan. That's great. Dan, we're going to send this as a Father's Day gift. I wish it was filled with a lot of beer, but uh, you'll have beer to fill it up with. No shortage of that, for sure. All right. Well, hey, yeah. I, I want to just say I, I truly appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, have a happy Father's Day weekend. And uh, you'll get this in the mail next week. That's great. Well, thank you. And a shout out to my brother, Mike and Danville, who's listening as well. You know, I, I, I also saw Mike fake in Danville. I remember labeling that one. So uh, shout out to Mike as well. There was, a, there was a lot of fakes and none of it was fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the real thing, I'll tell you. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. You put on a great event. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. And uh, that's the kind of stuff, you know what, I, I really enjoy putting on these events. Um, we spend a lot of time trying to figure it out and make sure that you guys all have a really good time. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, it's something way different than what we normally are doing. We do uh, over 14 events a year, and uh, they're all physical events. So this is only a second virtual event, and I, we're kind of learning along the way and trying to work with you guys. So uh, thank you guys. So uh, we're heading into the Shapers profile. Um, one of the biggest parts about Surf and Suds is the surf. So, uh, one of our friends from Carpinteria, um, Christian Beamish, who both of these boards is hand-shaped by, uh, it's a big part of what we do. And uh, we wanted to invite Christian to give us a little video and take us kind of into his world. So, let's, uh, let's dive into uh, Christian Beamish and uh, Surf Boys by California. Hey, my name is Christian Beamish. I'm a surfboard shaper. Uh, my company is called Surfboards California. I'm going to run the planer on this blank here for a second, and then I'll take off my Darth Vader kit here and, uh, and talk about some surfboards. Thanks for bearing with me. I wanted to uh, I wanted to demonstrate the uh, the planer work. 
this thing's a, a Hitachi planer um, modified for polyurethane foam shaping. And it's all about learning how to control this planer to get even bands and you can get right down to a, a you know, 1 64th inch tolerance. You can make perfect, literally perfect surfboards um, with the right tools and of course years of experience. Um, I specialize in twin fins. Uh, of course, I just took them away from the, <laughs> from the shaping bay and put them in the car to take them over to the glass shop. But uh, twin fins of all kinds of sizes. Um, I'm gonna dig one out of the rafters here and uh, show you. Here's another blank. Not this one, but this one. This has got a nice, nice clean outline. Uh, I do all kinds of variations. I guess it's hard to say in you know three minutes here what it is that I actually specialize in, but primarily twin fins, uh, high performance, small weight twin fins. Um, all the way up to uh, twin fins. Um, I got foam dust in my eye, uh, occupational hazard. Uh, twin fins for big wave boards too. Um, I've ridden 20 foot surf at Mavs and uh, Mavericks in Northern California with uh, keel fins, two, two keel fins to went wide tail block and a nice old fashioned outline uh, to get down the face of some big monsters. Um, the thing about twin fins is they, they have really clean water flow. The three fin thruster requires constant movement to, to keep it going. Of course, the upside of that is very dynamic aerial surfing. Uh, the downside is to always have to be moving. And if you've been surfing for a long time like me, sometimes it's nice to just kind of stand there, and, you know, feel the magic of the glide. So uh, that's the very short version. Um, thanks for checking it out. Um, yeah, Surfboards California, Christian Beamish, at your service. All right. Hey, you know, that's, that's really cool that Christian got to take us into his shaping bay. Um, at Surface Suds, you see done boards, and so people are allowed to, like, talk about the boards that they already see. Uh, it's, there's not a whole lot of people get it be inside the shaping bay, so uh, it was really cool of him. So I'm going to talk about these two boards that we have here. Really quickly. So this is uh, what he was talking about is uh, when he's talking about his twin keel fin, his best seller. This is a six eight transom tail twin keel feel or twin keel fin. This one is a eight two rifle ranger. Uh, it's meant for bigger surf. Uh, something you'll never see me inside of. And then uh, so uh, check them out. It's kristenbeamish.com, California surfboards by Kristen Beamish. All right, we're heading into our last two beers. Beers number 13 and number 14. Lucky number 13 is Seaward Brewing's Low Tide Hazy. So, crack it open. These guys are based out of Ventura. Another new brewery. They, were, they just started last year. Um, and uh, I've got to know Jason. Uh, we do something at Ventura Surf and Suds called Tres Cervecerias. It's a collaboration beer. These guys are one of the three beers, or th sorry, three breweries that will be participating along with the brewery that we're going to next, which is Tarantula Hill. So uh, let's see what Jason uh, has to say about the low tide hazy. They also have a high tide, and it's just a straight IPA. That one's good too. Hey, Surf and Suds Festival. This is uh, Jason from Seaward Brewing. I'm Mike. How y'all doing? And we just want to welcome, welcome you to this festival and uh, give you a little bit of a description about who we are and our beers. Um, Seaward was uh, started about a year and a half ago. Um, the name came from for two reasons. I uh, grew up down on Seaward in Pierpont, so being one of the founders, that's where that came from. But as 
the Ventura community, we're all kind of drawn towards towards the sea, so drawn seaward. Uh, it's a little a bit of a backstory on the name. Um, we want to introduce our Low Tide Hazy IPA. It's a beer with uh, Strata and Amarillo hops. Um, it's got a Pilsner base with lots of wheat, wheat and oats in it. Um, of course, using a Northeast uh, yeast. Um, this is one of our, our core brands um, that we started around when we opened. Um, it's kind of one we uh, have been fiddling with for quite a while. What I like about Low Tide, uh, as well as some of our other beers, is that they're in a constant state of evolving. Uh, we have a foundation for what we like in the beer, but we also like to change up things, change the hop profile, uh, change the yeast that we're using, uh, how we dry hop, and how we actually go through the process of brewing it. So. It's a beer that you can come in and try um, from batch to batch and find familiar, familiarities with it. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but at the same time, you can find subtle differences if you're, if you're accustomed to it and, and, you, and you drink it often enough. Um, and you can kind of come along with the process as we brew it from batch to batch. Um, and kind of, you know, some people have their favorites. Um, so... That's what I really appreciate about about this particular beer um, that we that we brew here. And like I said, this used Strata and Amarillo hops, so you get a big kick of orange and tropical flavors, little undertones of tart grapefruit, um, and of course we have a kind of a classic uh, smooth dankness that we have in most of our seaward hazy beers. Um, it kind of brings it more of a hybrid between a hazy and a, a West Coast IPA. Um, I really enjoy this beer. Super smooth, crushable for a 7% beer. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Um, if you haven't been by our tasting room, please come by. We're off of Market Street here in Ventura. And uh, we've got cans to go. We just did a can run this last weekend of uh, four different brands and usually 10 or so beers on top. Um, cheers. Cheers. That was a hell of a hazy. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm super excited about these guys uh, joining us and being part of our uh, Tres Cervecerias collaboration beer. Uh, Jason's been making some really good beers based out of Ventura. We're going to show, sorry, I got to rotate that can. Uh, this is actually one of the four new uh, beer can releases that they have on their website. And uh, to us, that's kind of what this event is kind of all about. So I, I really appreciate Jason. Uh, putting out something fresh, new, that uh, you're not going to see everywhere. Um, I like a lot of different style beers, and uh, obviously a lot of you guys know that Hazy's are this kind of new, up-and-coming uh, beer that's come from New England IPAs over to the West Coast, which we call Hazy's, um, or unfiltered IPAs. Um, but this is a well-done Hazy, and uh, it's really good and easy to drink. It's, uh, I just checked and I'm like, oh my God, it's six and a half percent. So that's another good one to finish with. Um, these guys opened er up early last year um, and fortunate enough to have them be part of their Surf and Suds event. They are open uh, there in Ventura uh, from four. It's, so it's uh, sit in service from four to 8 p.m. during the week, 12 to 8 on Saturday and 12 to 4 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, they also have beers to go. It's seawardbrewing.com. It's seawardbrewing.com. Follow them on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook, and they're always updating that. So uh, super exciting. Let's do uh, our last beer. I don't know if you guys are ready for it. I'm going to switch this over to that plethora of some amazing cans. And can art. My wife, my wife loves can art, and uh, I think we got a bunch of great ones. So beer me. Into beer number 14, last one. Sad to say, but I chose this one for a reason. Tarantula Hill Brewing Company, based out of Thousand Oaks. Uh, this is the Sombro, and it is a good one. So let's see what these guys have to say about their brewery and their beer. 
Um, pour yourself, uh, you know what? Pour it to the top. It's the last one. Let's go. Here we go. our Sabro IPA, which is of course made with Sabro hops. In addition to it being about a 50% dry hop of Sabro, the other two hops that make up that 50% of the dry hop are Nelson and Mosaic. So that's kind of a trifecta of a beer Dante found one time and we liked it so much yeah, that we, it needed so to good, we just needed to make it again. Um, what else do we need to talk about for this festival? Uh, oh. Our hours, we are open now. So we're Monday through Thursday, uh, guys, we are 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday, we are 12 to 10. Uh, practicing all COVID-19 rules, social distancing. Like we were saying earlier, the front patio is open and we also allocated the entire back parking lot is a huge beer garden with a bunch of easy ups. Awesome. So there's a bunch of shade. Uh, our menu. 36. We, our menu's been completely redone by our new chef, Ivan. It's super killer. There's tacos, burritos, all that good stuff is on there. So after you try these this weekend, you're 
we're not too partied out. We do invite you to swing on by. Come check us out. Come check us out. If, you, if it's on a brew day, you'll usually see us brewing. You can come holler at us and ask us some questions and we'll probably come over and have a beer with you guys. Love to have a beer with you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Saw, bro. Wow. Number 14, uh, Tarantula Hill is uh, one of the newer breweries in the area and uh, right on the edge of our Ventura County line, uh, heading into Los Angeles County. Um, it's a new brewery. As you heard in those guys, they have a ton of brewing experience uh, from spending a ton of time uh, at Stone Brewing Company. Um, the new brewery in, in uh, Thousand Oaks is beautiful. It's giant, and they have an amazing space. They have a huge front area, as you saw when they were walking in with the video. And then actually, they turned their back, uh, their back parking lot into a spot where people can uh, enjoy themselves while social distancing. Um, so these guys uh, have already, <laughs> these guys already won a silver medal, uh, and they just opened last year. It's California Craft Brewers Cup. They won a silver medal for their batch 002 double IPA. Um, and I have a friend out there who's uh, second time there, Gary Magnon from uh, Hopped LA. Gary, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, you're awesome, and I love Hopped LA. But Hopped LA voted them as top five beers, uh, and that's a pretty impressive list to be on uh, for this specific beer. Uh, these guys are also part of our collab collaboration beer that I spoke of uh, for Ventura Servant Suds. Uh, so we're thankful and uh, appreciate those guys. Tarantulahillbrewing.com. Again, it's Tarantula, actually, it's sorry, Tarantulahillbrewingco.com. So uh, we're going to end this. No, actually, we're not. I'm going to go to Sky again. You guys remember my friend Sky, right? Sky, what do you think about this beer? are now tuned in to Sippin' with Sky. What up? It's your boy Sky from Happy Place Craft Beer, Wine, and Spirits. And I'm honored to be a part of Father's Day special at-home craft beer festival brought to you by Surf and Suds and Central Coast. Uh, being a craft beer connoisseur and somebody who loves craft beer, um, I've been involved in craft beer for over 11 years. Um, I've had Happy Place Craft Beer, Wine and Spirits, previously known as Sam Sadikoy Liquor for about 16 years. And uh, I've been heavy into craft beer for about 11 years. And it's so exciting to see where craft beer has gone. Uh, from having one brewery in, in a 30, 40, 50 mile radius to having all these amazing breweries that you're getting to taste today. So it is just absolutely amazing to see where craft beer has gotten and how many amazing beers are right here in the 805. So again, I'm super honored to be here. And I want to say again, happy Father's Day to all you amazing fathers. And I hope everybody is enjoying a safe and happy quarantine beer fest. Y'all ready to drink some beer? Let's do it. We about to start off with Tarantula Hill. Sup, bro? It's not as clear as some IPAs, and it's it's not a hazy IPA. So this is an amazing, really easy drinking West Coast style IPA. And um, the aroma on here, uh, when I first drank it, I got a little bit of tropicalness, and uh, definitely on the tropicalness, I got a lot of tangerine as well. So let's try this again. I, I, I'm also picking up a light, light coconut in there. Um, it's not super, super strong, but if you really get in there, you can definitely smell some coconut, which uh, which is really nice on the nose. Definitely a refreshing beer. It's, um, it's a beer I see myself going to the beach, hanging out with my boys in the backyard, and just being like, sup, bro? So uh, definitely refreshing. I recommend it. I think it's great. And uh, if you like this beer, check out all the other amazing beers you can find out Tarantula Hill Brewing 
or you can pop by at Happy Place Craft Beer, Wine and Spirits, and we'd love to show you around. And if you're looking for a cool craft beer that you can't find or need some recommendations, just shoot us a DM at Happy Place on Instagram at We Deliver Liquor. Cheers. That's my boy, Sky. Make sure you follow him at We Deliver Liquor on Instagram and get your hands on some amazing craft beer. Thank you, Sky. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, sadly, this is it. We finished all our beers. But there was so many 16-ounce cans out there. I hope you have plenty of beer left to enjoy the rest of your day and trying all these beers that we got to try today and continue to talk about them. Make sure uh, that you tell all your friends about the Serpent Suds at Home Fest. July 25th is the next one. Um, we went through 14 breweries, 14 beers. We made it. You made it. I'm stoked. You're stoked. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're going to go to uh, ending this party. I apologize for ending it. I wish we could go longer, but you can join us July 25th. Let's hit the splash screen, and let's go on to the next one. Here we go. This event couldn't be made possible without our sponsors, so we want to thank them as well. It's Go Goleta, our presenting sponsor, Booze League, title sponsor for Surf and Suds, City of Atascadero, Coastal Dispensary, Happy Place Craft Beer, Drink Tanks, Guido App, Boat Beer Fest, Acorn Bar, Out West Digital, Santa Barbara Independent. And uh, I hope you guys all join us at the Zoom after party that's going to start at 315 uh, it may run a little bit later than that, but head on over there. We'll go live. You guys can ask a bunch of questions uh, to the breweries that are going to be there. Mike's going to get that thing dialed in right now and make sure all those breweries are lined up. And uh, our next event, July 25th at Home Fest, uh, it's going to feature 13 craft breweries as well as one kombucha company. 14 can is Angel City Brewery. Uh, Belching Beaver Brewery, Draconium, Calidad Beer, Flying Embers, Founders Brewery, Night Lizard, Pizza Bort, Pocock, Red Tandem, Sierra Nevada, Telco, and Three Weavers. Tickets on sale at, Sierra, at uh, surfbeerfest.com. You also get an email. We are going to end this thing. Here's everybody that you guys got to see. This is everybody, all 14 breweries from all four counties, all of our sponsors that you saw. You guys made it. You guys are champs. We appreciate you. And uh, I have one more thing to say before we head on out. So, thank you. Thank you for spending your time with us. Surf and Suds at Home, Beer Fest, June 20th, um, along with our friends at Central Coast Craft Beer Festival and the Central Coast Brewers Guild. Um, we appreciate it. We're going to end it with a dance party. That's right. I know you're feeling good. And I have the best DJ on the Central Coast, DJ Hectic, who put together a mix to end it all. So this is the end you can see from me. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Cheers. Let's go. Everyone get up, get dancing. Enjoy the rest of your time. I'll see you at the Zoom after party. One. Hey, what's up, you guys? DJ Hector here. Welcome to the Surfing Suds at Home Beer Fest Part 2. It's Father's Day weekend, so I just want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm about to throw it on the set, so if you like what you hear, feel free to tip me on Venmo at DJ Hectic. The link is on the screen. Let's go. Get up on those couches. Let's party, all right? DJ Hector, let's go! DJ Hector, come Watching, waiting, commiserating Say it ain't so, I will not go Turn the lights off, carry me home na 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 na
Mixtape, that shit sounded like an album. Who'd have thought a countrywide tour would be the outcome? Labels want my name beside an X like Malcolm. Everybody got a deal. I did it without one. Yeah, nigga, I'm about my business. Killing all these rappers, you would swear I had a hit list. Everyone who doubted me is asking for forgiveness. If you ain't been a part of it, at least you got to witness. Bitches. It may not mean nothing to y'all. Understand nothing was done for me, so I don't plan on stopping at all. DJ Hector, come, let's go. DJ Hector, I've been trouble trying to sleep. I'm counting sheep, but running out. As time ticks by. Still I try No rest for cloud tops in my mind put, 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 Let's go But do you still You can do it all by yourself Let me see you do it hey. Let me see you do it Hey, hey. Snap your fingers But do you still You can do it all by Dream. 
DJ Hank. Go, let's go! DJ Hank! Some good times. But when I saw you last night, girl, no, I just couldn't define. No, we can look the man, just girl. I saw you knocking my name. And I just got to confess, girl. I felt there's something happening. I see it on my face and I lie. And I know I said I was doing just fine. But I don't know what you did to me last night. Ooh, girl, you did. Go DJ, that's my DJ. 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 Go DJ, that's that's my DJ. Go, 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 DJ. Player. Give me some brew and I might just chill But I'm the type that like to light another joint like Cypress Hill I still do these spit loogies when I puff on it I got some bucks on it, but it ain't enough on it Go get the S, the T-I-D-E-S Nevertheless, I'm hella fresh, rolling joints like a cigarette So pass it across the table like ping pong, I'm gone Beating my chest like King Kong And some wrap my lips around the 40 And when it comes to getting another stogie Fools all kick in like Shinobi Know me ain't my homie to begin with, it's too many hands to be. Probably let my friend hit bit. Unless you pull out the fat crispy. Five dollar bill on the real before it's history. Cause fools be having them vacuum lungs. And if you let them hit it for free, you hella dumb. Da dum dum. I come to school with a tailor on my earlobe. Avoiding all the thick teasers, skeezers, and weirdos. That be throwing off the land like where the bomb at. Give me two bucks, you take a puff and pass my bomb back. Suck up the dank like a slurpee. This serious bomb will make a nigga go delirious like Andy Murphy. I got more growing pains than Maggie. 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 Some people call me the space cowboy. Yeah. Some call me the gangster of love. Bounce. Come on, bounce. Some people call me Maurice. Uh, uh. Or the pompatists of love. DJ Hector, come DJ Hector! Let's just scratch real quick and we'll call it.